for the first time in five years, it's Monday night football time in the great jazz capital of the world, the colorful city of New Orleans, Louisiana. And somehow in this graceful old southern town, they managed to combine the old and the new, give you a sense of the contemporary and even sometimes the strange. But for tonight, a high tension in the town because right in here, in the Louisiana Superdome, the Saints, only a half game behind the Rams in the NFC West, need a victory to gain a tie and for the first time maybe make the playoffs in the NFL. They play the Raiders tonight. Who are the Saints? Let's look at the men who lead them. Number 42 is Chuck Muncy, a man of enormous ability out of California, the man who can run, who can catch, who can block, who can throw the option pass. And they are also led by the quarterback, Archie Manning, who now has one of the most gifted receivers in football to throw to, Wes Chandler. Others leading the pack, Tony Galbraith, Ike Harris, and Henry Child. So tonight, Monday night, football, New Orleans against Oakland. 20 seconds there, stand by all cameras. One and two ready. Stand by, open your mics on the field. Standing. Ready, stand by, slow low. Slow-mo's ready. Three, two, one. the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Oakland Raiders against the New Orleans Saints. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Datsun, who invites you to test drive the all-new 200 SX Sport Coupe. It'll drive you like you've never been driven at your Datsun dealer now. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. We are panning the Superdome to show you the excitement that prevails here tonight. A sellout crowd, 71,000 plus. The New Orleans Saints, with their best season ever of a year ago, 7-9. and nine. Well, they have matched that win record already here in 1979. They could go to the playoffs. The New Orleans Saints, off on their best year in their 12-year history. Again, a capacity crowd and one of the legends, a living legend here in New Orleans for the national anthem, Al Hurt. almost synonymous with Bourbon Street here in New Orleans. The game coming up for the New Orleans Saints. Much excitement. They need a win tonight to tie the Rams in the Western Division of the NFC. They have high hopes that they can for the first time ever Howard go to the playoffs. 
Well, Frank, Kenny Stabler, the bearded leader of the Oakland Raiders, hit this great southern city and said, we recognize the Saints' weapons. The key to this game for us is ball control, meaning by that, keeping possession of the ball more time in the game than the opposition. And by that, he means further much more time. Whether or not they can do it will depend to a great degree on their own defense. Dan DeRue? Well, I think so, Howard. I think when you look at what he has to work with, they've inserted Arthur Whittington into the lineup tonight to get a little speed to go along with Mark Van Egan. The Saints have the worst record in the league in defending against the run, 4.8 yards. So we can see the two tight end system more than likely with Casper and Chester. And he looks like he could run some tonight. Dick, up to you. Dick Nolan looking on. The New Orleans Saints have won the toss. They'll receive. They pulled all the stops out. They have dropped a great athlete into the end zone to receive the kick of Oakland's Jim Breach. Wes Chandler, number 89. There he is. Wide receiver. He's not been running kickoffs back this year. Everything is out tonight. This is Chandler from the 13-yard line. And Oakland hustles down. Chandler is down at the 23-yard line. And let's meet the offensive unit. Some call him Huckleberry Finn, Archie Manning, named by many of the polls as the player of the year a year ago in the NFC. Chuck Munchie, Tony Grau, but you've heard of him. An offensive line that's had to be adjusted over the year. Conrad Dover, 66, you've heard of him. He likes the attention, but he's a fine guard. The wide receivers are Ike Harris, Wes Chandler, you saw on the kickoff. He can do it all. He can go deep. He works well underneath, does Wes Chandler. And this man, Archie Manning, can get the football to him. Quick note of the tight end, Henry Childs, one of the finest tight end receivers in the league today. On first down, handoff inside, and it's Chuck oh, Muncy. He boy. finds an opening, and Muncy is out over the 35. First down, Mike Davis had to make the save defensively for the Oakland Raiders, and let's beat them. They've had to adjust dramatically because of injuries over the year. Dave Browning, best for that trio. Ted Hendricks, you know about him. He's always around the football. And defensively, in the secondary, Jack Tatum roams at the free safety number 32. The cornerbacks Lester Hayes 37 and Henry Williams a rookie from San Diego State number 45 at the right cornerback position. Ball out over the 35 just inside the 37 first and 10. Muncie and Galbraith what a running pair they are. Muncie 42 and he has the football following Galbraith. Uh, he does a lot of things like that as he moves out over the 40 to the 43. It's a gain of six. It'll be second and four. Oakland has not been an effective team on artificial turf. According to Al Davis, their big problem will not be ball control, as Stabler says, but will be tackling, because on this turf, Muncie and Galbraith are very, very difficult to bring down. They have a habit of slipping away for extra yardage, Don. Good point. Oakland, the second leading offense in the National Football Conference. They're fourth in the conference. Rushing, third, passing. Second down, four. Manny, hands off. Tony Calvert, he's met there and met there very quickly. Defensively by Rod Martin, the right linebacker for the Oakland Raiders. And again, Oakland will shuff, shuffle people in and out considerably. They open with the 3-4 on first and 10. They'll bring in Reggie Kimla, a rookie from Oklahoma, when they want to go to a 4-3. They'll bring in number 90, Willie Jones, when they want the pass rush, the rookie from Florida State. No gain, third down, long three. The ball just over the 43-yard line. Ike Harris put to the right. Manning drops the football. There's a wild scramble. Henry was there first, and it could be Villapiano. Could be, but they... May have gotten in there, New Orleans to read. And New Orleans gets it back. Bottom yep. of the pile is Pear. But New Orleans comes up with it. John Hill, the center. And that will bring out Rick Partridge. Here is Rick Partridge. Came up earlier this year with Green Bay. Was cut, fortunately, when Russell Erksleben. The number one draft pick of the New Orleans Saints was injured during preseason training camp. Rick Partridge was available. Ira Matthews is deep for Oakland. Beautiful punt by Partridge. Matthews all the way back to his 13-yard line. And he gets it back out to the 22, a 47-yard punt by Rick Partridge. So Oakland will have their first possession of the night, and they'll begin from the 22-yard line. We'll be back in the Superdome in just a moment. 
very calm, relaxed Kenny Stabler. Came off what many considered a bad year a year ago. And you saw a quick look at his stats. We'll develop that further as we take a look at the entire offense. Stabler, the quarterback, of course. Arthur Whittington, second-year man out of SMU. One setback number 22 along with Mark Van Egan. Van Egan looking for a possible fourth consecutive 1,000-yard season at fullback. Wide receiver change with Rich Martini, number 89. There he is in motion. Van Egan gets the call, and he is nailed at the line of scrimmage defensively. Don Reese for the New Orleans Saints. And look at the offensive line. Art Shell, well, they say he's about 275. He looks like more like 300, but he is effective over the left side, as is Gene Upshaw. They're the key to the open offensive line, along with Dave Dalby. Wide receiver, we've told you, is Cliff, uh, rather, Rich Martini replacing Cliff Branch tonight. The two tight end offense are open, is in there. Casper, 87. Raymond Chester, number 88. 93 receptions this season between them. Stabler on second and 10. Has the time. Over the middle, and it's complete Van Egan. And Van Egan out to the 30-yard line. Short of the first down. It'll be third down and two. Ken Bordelon was there. And let's take a look at the 4-3 of head coach Dick Nolan. He surprised everyone a little bit because he is definitely a 4-3 fan, having been trained under Tom Landry. He went to a 3-4 last week. Those are the linebackers. And there are the defensive secondaries, Tom Myers, with six interceptions at free safety for New Orleans. Third down, two for the Oakland Raiders. And uh, Van Egan, he has the first down. Out over the 32-yard line, close to the 33. And it may be close enough for a measurement. We don't think so. Derlin Moore defensively there for New Orleans. Mark Van Egan, he doesn't get you the long gainer, but he doesn't fumble the football, and he always shows up to play. There's a big fan of Don Meredith. <laughs> According to the local papers, he really admires Don singing. I can't understand why he'd say that. Can you? He said I was out of tune. Well, we're in control now. On first and ten, Arthur Whittington. And Whittington over the 35, out to the 37-yard line, a gain of about five. Giving four, it'll be second down six. Elois Grooms on the stop defensively for the New Orleans Saints. The stat I mentioned at the top of the show, Frank, about the Saints being the weakest team against the run. Uh, Dick Nolan thinks that he thinks that's a misleading stat because he said almost every game somebody has broken one for him on a long gainer. He said this to consistently, consistently. His team is doing really well. He likes the way they're adjusting to the flex defense. They've only played it a little over a year. Two great tight ends in the offense of the Oakland Raiders on second down and six. Sabler finds Whittington all alone. No one picked him up. He has the first down out of the 45 with the 47-yard line. I really don't understand that absence of defense. Now. Nobody reading the play. But yeah, I, somebody missed it, I'm sure. However, the thing that always impresses me, you see Kenny coming back. A oh, little quick look that he had first. He said, wait a minute, somebody missed over here with Whittington. He knows that somebody's going to be out there. Two ways to pick it up, just to see Whittington open by himself or to look downfield and see a linebacker that's where he's not supposed to be. That's a great pro. He looked down the field. He knew Whittington had to be open. He was not the intended receiver. First and ten. The ball at Oakland's 47-yard line. Van Egan. Van Egan over midfield. Down inside the 49-yard line for a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Oakland offensively ripping New Orleans line. Going back to our beginning storyline, to use the Bible, the book of Genesis, like in the that. beginning. Yes. Stabler is doing exactly what he said he wanted to do and must do, at least in the first five minutes of this ball game. Ball control. Nearly midway through the first quarter. No score if you join us late. Open with the football. Right. Complete Casper, first down inside the 40 and down close to the 38-yard line. Dave Casper with his 43rd reception of the season, and he didn't catch a pass until the fifth game of the year. Nobody came but the four defensive linemen. Did a good job of picking them up. Casper came well, had some time to work. Kenny had a little time to look at different places that time. Actually, the two tight end situation is not a bad passing uh, offense at all, particularly when you have this type of per, uh, personnel on your side. You got Casper on one side and Chester on the other. Both of them can go deep. When he gets down next to Art Shell, you hardly see Casper. On the first down, Stabler to the air. Casper, complete. 
That's just Out like the 32 yard line. It's a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. He really works on this simple turnout. Why don't you take this, Don? Now, how really he's really doing? You, he's just picking them apart. That's like you throwing those past skeleton drills on Tuesday. There's nobody out there close. Well, you use the right phrase. He picks them apart like a surgeon. Yeah. Unquestionably, one of the most accurate passers within memory in professional football. When he's right. When he's wrong, he'll throw five intercepts <laughs> against a team like the Jets and unaccountably lose. He's four for four, is Ken Stabler, for 35 yards. Open on the move, and he can gets the call, and bulldozes his way. Close to another open first down at the 28. Well, he seems to be picking on that left side. I don't know whether it's just out of habit, because we've mentioned so many times they like to run over that way. Uh, but that might be when you try to follow up. Big Art Shell's a pretty good place to go. Their pass rusher primarily for the Saints has been Lewis Grooms most of the year. He leads the team in sacks. But I think uh, this Don Reese, when Reese came in, Howard, he, he added a little bit of maturity to this Saint defense that they needed. Nolan's really pleased with uh, the way he's fit in here with their organization and seems to kind of lift the players up around him. They were at Reese. able to come back with Derlin Moore also tonight, Don. He has been suffering with a sore ankle. He is in there, a defensive tackle. And you saw how much is required for the first down. It's 7.56. Notice, here in the first quarter. Notice the way, Don, Kenny is mixing the run with the relatively short pass. You'd think he's probably done this before, wouldn't you? Uh, all doing. his life. Yeah. Both teams, 7 and 6. Oakland, however, well, they have a mathematical shot. That's about it. New Orleans very much alive. A win tonight. They tie the Rams for the lead in their division. This is Van Egan. Van Egan gets the first down. Down to the 25-yard line. Fetterspiel, middle linebacker in there defensively for New Orleans. And Oakland giving the New Orleans defense a textbook lesson in offense. Went down to 720 left in the first quarter and counting. And look at the way Oakland is exercising ball control. First and ten. The two tight ends remain. Martini split to the right. It's Martini out of the University of California, Davis. Stabler with all the time in the world, and he'll eat you alive if you give him that time to throw the ball. Complete to Raymond Tester. He's down to the 13-yard line. I don't think I've seen this many receivers that wide open in a game all year. Man, they're not they're not close. Uh, well, there's no secret that Davis considers them. The Saints vulnerable in the secondary. It seems to me that they're getting a little confused with that linebacker drops. They're either going back too deep. Uh, Frank mentioned that top man, one of the boys from Syracuse, Tommy Myers, an eight-year man who's consistently been a stick-out ball player. But after that, there is weakness. Stabler puts Martini to the left. He hands off to Whittington. He follows Van Egan. And Whittington down to the six-yard line. Tom Myers made the stop there. Short of a first down, gain of seven. Give him eight. It'll be second down and two. Here's a good shot of uh, the blocking over. We talk about Art Shell, number 78, Gene Upshaw, 63. Look at Gene come out. That's Bar Leone, good linebacker. Right off of that block, Sylvester comes on the inside. You really, once again, that's the way you draw it up on the, on the blackboard. So now, guys, can you do this? We can play right off the block. Well, it's an old saw that they love to run left. Oh, what's defense of the New Orleans Saints? Technically, it is an awfully good defense. Sometimes you need a lot better people than we're watching tonight. Van Egan, corral there, but he moves inside. Close to another first down to the four-yard line. Barry Bennett at the bottom of that pile. Bennett was there. This linebacker I mentioned earlier, Frank, out of LSU, third-year guy, Ken Borleone, is the guy that really the coaching staff thinks he's just terrific as far as his overall physical talent. He's a he's a med student, I think, and he uh, very bright young man. They think he has a good possibility maybe someday to move into the middle where Joe Fetterspiel. That's is. a pretty tough guy to replace, Dandy. Yeah, he's the leading tackle. Fetterspiel is there. Just one of the young kid that I think they're looking to down the line somewhere. They really think they've got something going here in New Orleans, and they're really pleased with the Young talent, they have not, they've only got 22 players on the squad that they got via the draft. Most of them have been either for trades or pick up free agent sort of guys, so they're trying to get their draft system to work for them. So first and goal, the ball at the four, Oakland, 13 plays. Booker Russell comes in. 
Doesn't carry the ball that often. He's often gets the call down near the goal line. Gary Jensen is also in there, number 31. But the ball goes to Russell. Russell struggles close to the two-yard line and driven back. Bettersfield in there with help from friends. There's a reason why Bucker Russell is put in close to the goal line. Notice the average 6.3 yards. That comes substantially from a run just before the first half ended in the recent game against Denver, won by Oakland. He busted it for 72 yards, but he, and he had an over 100-yard day with relatively few carries. But he is very tough to stop near that goal line. He smells it. Second and goal. Stabler. A lot of time. Can't find a receiver. And he finds Chester. Uh -huh. He did. Touchdown. Now that's slick, isn't it? And when he can look all over the field like that, you know there is no pass for rush pressure at all. Let's see. I think he really was trying to throw over to the other side. He's trying to hit. Yeah, he's wait a minute. Where did everybody go? He turns around. That's what I think he does really well out. When he's really on, he can throw the ball. It just looks so pretty. That thing never ripples at all. Chester's coming out, trying to open up the secondary. I would say more than likely he was not the intended receiver. Don't you love the way he runs around as we watch the conversion attempt, waiting for Kenny to find him? Yeah. Jim Breach for the conversion as Oakland puts the score on the board first. And flags are down. There was contact made. Oakland used seven minutes and 55 seconds in that drive. And they did most everything. They did the little runs off the left. They had a quick little trap up the right. Well, Get Max. When Kenny said ball control, and now you look at the Oakland leader, when he said ball control, he meant exactly that. Yes, he'd throw the pass, but he'd throw the short stuff. And yes, he'd use the run. And he's got a lot of folks here tonight. But Archie Manning called from L.A. He said, that's not Los Angeles, that's Lower Alabama. <laughs> and they've all come over. I felt so sorry for this guy we're getting. Uh, you got to take a look at it right now. And, uh, Kansas City. The field goal that he missed, yeah. that was, oh, boy, you didn't see anybody have that. Same same distance. Would have tied the game up. They could have gone to overtime. He missed from this distance. But right he does not miss on this conversion attempt, and the Oakland Raiders are on top 7 0. Four minutes and 33 seconds remaining from a jam packed Superdome in Orleans. We'll be back. Four. A report of the World Gymnastics Championships, the team competition, wide world of sports. Set to kick off now. Jim Breach is in there. We have become accustomed to Ray Guy, but we see Jim Breach. Deep is Wes Chandler, and he respects Breach's distance. He's in the end zone. Breach hangs it up. And this will be Wayne Wilson, the rookie from Shepherd College. And Wilson out to the 20-yard line, where the New Orleans offense, which had, had a lot of time to think it over, comes back onto the field. With only 4.25 left in the first quarter. And now the other side of the coin in the storyline. Al Davis says, let Kenny keep the ball as long as he can. But it's not going to help us unless we score and stop them from scoring. And they can score with their weapons in two minutes. They're tough. That's the stats from a week ago. They finally broke the Atlanta jinx. That's what they had called it on first and ten. The cook toss. Chuck Muncie. Muncie showing the agility as a flag goes down. The agility of a man who weighs about 235 down the sidelines. They mark it out close to the 30-yard line. But again, a flag is down. I believe it's going to go against New Orleans. Our referee tonight we'll be hearing from hopefully seldom is Bob Frederick clipping indicated against the New Orleans Saints well they've had uh, really I would say the drive would stop by the fumble although that all right we've got a look at that clip that's Monty Johnson out there and zap big number JT Taylor who's been hampered a little bit with injuries this year was the guy guilty of the of the clip New Orleans is extremely powerful offensive team a couple of stats that I think are, are extremely important is that their average, they lead the league in the yards per number 71. Okay. The offense, first down. They're the big two tight ends from the Oakland group, Casper and Chester. Oh, that's a good pair. Like to draw to those most every time. Really is. First and 20. West Chandler, split to the left by Archie Manny, who calls his own plays. Hi, Harris, top of your screen. Manning, he has a lot of time. Dumps it out to Tony Galbraith. 
And Galbraith gets half of it back, back to the original line of scrimmage, out over the 20. Galbraith, a very fine receiver for the Saints, just an all-around gifted athlete. That is the point. You will see Manning turning to that more and more, especially if New Orleans gets into grave and difficulty. Galbraith is a truly exceptional receiver. Great hands and has a way of chewing up yardage once he gets the football. Dick Nolan, the coach. Nolan took over when Hank Stram was fired a year ago, took the Saints to their best record ever, 7-9. Trying his match that and wins already this season. Trying to get to the playoffs for the first time in the history of the franchise. Reading the blitz, Manning hangs it up for West Chandler. The flag is down. Defensively, it was Lester Hayes. Well, they'll probably call that as a face guarding sort of pass interference. I guess so. But they may be on the offense. Let's see what he's saying. Now, defensive pass interference. Defensive pass interference, number 37, push down. I'll tell you, let's look at it again. Lester Hayes has been playing superb football. He knows he's got to stay close. He knows the blitz was on. You saw the foul. The first down is out to the 43-yard line. Yeah, Lester got him that time. He did. He, you've, got, you've got to give him a right to go up there and catch that ball. Hey, right now, there are a few defensive backs playing as well as Lester Hayes, leading the club with six interceptions. And Oakland is not getting all that much of a pass rush, and that's a lot of interceptions when you don't have a rush. Muncie. Oh. Turns a corner, and the big man powders out to midfield, ran right through. Henry Williams, and you better believe number 45, Henry Williams, felt the jolt in the jar as Muncie picks up a quick eight. Let's look at the New Orleans mascot as if in tribute to Chuck Muncie. Looks uh, like there, Sir Charles. There is almost no limit to Muncie's ability. His problem, quite frankly, how about them Saints, Howard? I have nothing against the Saints. Uh, some local DJ raised a fura trying to make a name for himself. Second down, two. Muncie reads it well, runs right into the arms of Dave Pear, short of the first down. Inside the 49, he had to get to the 48. It'll be third and short. I was about to say, Frank, as you well know, that Muncie's only problem has been an apparent disinclination to play the way he can play on certain days. When he goes all out, with his ability to throw the option pass and to catch the pass downfield, he becomes in some ways a better all-around back even than the mighty Earl Campbell. Had a good year, Muncie, heading for a 1,000-yard season, close to 950 yards as of now. Third in the yard. Galbraith gets the call. Close to the first down, I believe he has it. They've been using both backs as far as balance extremely well. Each of them have been handling the ball about the same. Galbraith 28 times a game and Muncie 27. And that is the kind of balance that uh, he didn't pick up that first down. I wouldn't be he's going to go for it. And I don't really blame him. They, they can't really I don't think they can play as conservative as they might uh, under a Dick Nolan organization say at the beginning of the season. He knows that he has to win this game. And there's a the first down so they did make it. Very interested observers tonight of the Los Angeles Rams who yesterday defeated Minnesota. As you look at the graphics on this two running back pair, they defeated Minnesota in overtime yesterday. And of course, the win tonight by New Orleans would move them back into a tie. The Rams and the New Orleans Saints will meet on the final Sunday of the season in Los Angeles. That was a very interesting graphic. I'll get to it in a moment. First and ten. 47-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders on top, 7-0. Wow. Right behind the line. That is complete. Goes out to Ike Harris. Was that on First the money? Down. Inside the 35-yard line. He zipped that one right on the money. Ike Harris turned around and the ball was there. Howard mentioned it. Uh, uh, somebody mentioned it. Now this guy can throw the ball when he's right. And man, there again, he is right. That was not bad defensive coverage. It was just a good throw, and Harris was right there. First down. Oh, Oddly enough, the attack goes against Lester Hayes on the left side. He perhaps the best defensive back on the field at the moment, while a rookie, Henry Williams, is on the right side. First and 10, New Orleans inside the 35 at the 34-yard line of Oakland. Draw play. 
Oh, good move. Muncie, big hole. Good move. Muncie collected there and dropped by number 72, John Matuzak. And not until Muncie had moved down to the 25-yard line. Close to another first down. There's a good move here by Muncie. You'll see he takes it on a quick little drop. Comes right back in. There's Bill Piano upside in the 841. That little sidestep there, that's really super. They asked him to put on about 10 more pounds this year, and he's playing at about 235. He and Galbraith, I saw yesterday, those guys really are big. 36 yards on the night for Muncie as he is heading for a thousand yard season. Perhaps we'll get it tonight. And uh, Muncie, and Muncie lost his head. It's the first down, down around the 21 yard line. As you see, the final seconds expiring here in the first quarter. And New Orleans have taken the page from the Oakland Raiders. They are exercising their own ball control. End of the first quarter, Oakland on top, 7 0. We'll be back. The Saints, number one draft pick in 76, Chuck Muncie, has just collected 3,000 yards on his career. He came up in 76. He needs 40 tonight for a thousand yard season. First and 10, New Orleans. The ball inside the 22 yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Mike Harris split to the right. This drive began at the 21 yard line of the New Orleans Saints. Muncie with Galbraith out front. Good move there. Oh, man. Boy, Muncie. Ran right through Willie Jones, gave him a little move. I bet Jones cannot believe that a man that big has those kind of moves and that kind of speed. Watch number 90 play with the air. You're going to see, or maybe not see, a good block by Galbraith out there just to get him off balance. There he goes through. That's a little dip out you were talking about, Frank, and that's that acceleration. And he is, he's playing at 235 pounds. The baby bull backfield is right there. Well, that's what Scram was after when he coached here and he drafted Muncie and Galbraith. But there's a predecessor to that when Ali Sherman was coaching the Giants. He wanted this kind of talent. He had Thurlow, Mercine, and Fredrickson. Only Tucker had it while healthy. First and goal. Muncie gets to call again. Keeps his feet. Gets to the five-yard line. It'll be second and goal up into there by Mike Davis. And Muncie putting on quite a show here tonight for a sold-out crowd at the Superdome. Over 71,000. Frank, that was a crucial down, I think, just based on the fact that they don't have the opportunity to make a first down before they score. They're on the nine-yard line, and that's, as we've said many times, a very tough, those are the toughest yardage. But to pick up five, or at least a good four on that one, they got a chance to move it in. I don't think they'll go for a field goal. Second and goal. Muncie and Galbraith. Muncie again gets the call. Turns inside and just uses good streak, uh, pulling down to the two-yard line, where it'll be third and goal. Those are the yards that you, it only goes on the statistical chart as a couple-yard gain. But all of us know that it really means an awful lot more down there. When you see a guy that's that big, that strong, that can carry somebody for a couple of yards, you're going to score points when ordinarily other teams won't. Had a good look at a former teammate of mine, Dick Nolan, eight years, head coach of San Francisco, trained and played under Tom Landry, believes in the 4-3 flex, believes in his principles. I believe. Third down, quick toss, Galbraith. He bowls in. Uh -huh. Touchdown, New Orleans. I tell you, he deserves credit for that one. <laughs> he really forced his own way. He did. He had J.T. Taylor out there in front of him. As you see a shot of the crowd, they're going wild. They're waiting. Tony Galbraith himself is a 230-pounder, and you saw it in action right then. The pom-poms, much in evidence. Look at it again. Look at JT. Taylor trying to get out there. Galbraith says, I can't wait on you, fellow. I got to go. That's exactly what happened. He passed his would-be blocker and forced his way in. Garo Yepremian. Again, he has been a lifesaver. Released by Miami, and they kept... Uwe von Schaumann, Russell Erzleben went down, and Gary Premium came in, and he ties it up at 7. 13-30, remaining in the first half. Good, solid, hard-played football. The crowd is roaring because they have just been informed the official scorer has given Tuck Muncy a change it from 59 yards on the night to 60 yards. That gives him an even thousand for the season. 
Barry Apremian to kick off. Ira Matthews is number 43. Larry Brunson is number 82. Ira Matthews led the nation. Kickoff returns a year ago. This will be, however, Larry Brunson. And Larry Brunson, who plied his trade for so many years with Kansas City, out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. And let's take a look at a man who just collected his first 1,000-yard season. His best year was two years ago, 811 yards, but he's been a different performer, as we've talked about already this evening, this year. A most happy fellow. Remember, that's officially 60 yards. Ignore the graphic. And Brunson in that kick run almost was stripped of the football. Carried it a little bit dangerously. Well, they, Brunson and Matthews both are very good. They lead the league in kickoff returns. And uh, you've got to look for the guys that bring it back for that responsibility. And so New Orleans used a little over six minutes on the clock in their touchdown. Stabler, Whittington. And Whittington over the 35 to the 37. Give him six. It'll be second and four. Upended by Pat Hughes, a former giant, a very heady linebacker for the New Orleans Saints. Stabler now seven for seven. A little deceiving. And that's why percentage of completions can be such a deceiving statistic as you look at Archie Manning, the opposition quarterback, because Kenny's throwing the ch short, cheap stuff, and this defense of New Orleans is prone to give it. Second down, four. And uh, Whittington, big hole, Whittington first down and more, out over the 45. Stopped there by Elois Grooms defensively. Dave Dalby did a good job on Fetterspiel that time. Came out from his offensive center position. Fetterspiel, the middle linebacker. See a shot at him. They get the defensive signals from the sideline. We get a chance, our creative director, Mr. Forty, will perhaps get us a shot of Art Whittington's leg where he has it totally smeared with what we call stick'em. Stick'em, stick'em. You see the quarterback and center often call for a change of ball. Well, we'll give you a shot of that in a little bit, show you why. But it really gums up the football. Here's Whittington with a good move. And Whittington close to midfield. Gain of four, second down six. Clarence Chapman up there for the stop. See that stuff on his right ankle? That is just like pine tar. Gets on the football. Receivers, ball carriers like to work. And the quarterbacks hate it. And so does the center. He's a good one, Frank, out of SMU, and he set a uh, Oakland Raider rushing record for a rookie. Came in last year, 600 and some odd yards, 61 yards, a good shot of some more stick -em. Second down, long six, the ball inside the 49-yard line. Stabler, both quarterbacks with all the time in the world tonight. Whittington, incomplete, hit there by Chapman. That's it, the Chapman report. Chapman, along with the other cornerback of the New Orleans Saints, were missing for the first three games of the season. There's been a different defense with him back. Really has. Tom Myers was the only guy that was in there on a full-time basis. That's just a good hit. Whittington uh, had the ball. He had not been hit. Would have been sure held it. Now they have a difficult third-down situation. Third and six. Chanting defense. Stabler to Casper, incomplete intercepted. Uh oh, he's gone. Eric Felton, he could take it a long way. Oh, Felton, oh. taken by Dave Casper, but not until the ball that was deflected and returned by Felton was moved to the 19 yard line. And somebody really put a shot on Casper downfield. You saw it. And he was the man who made the save down at the 19. Once again, Frank Kenny's got plenty of time to throw. You see Casper coming over the other side. He just couldn't. Whoa! He sure did get hit. Ray Brown hit him. Ray Brown. Now watch Casper will get on his feet, Don, and run Felton down. Eric Felton out of Texas Tech. Ray Brown out of West Texas Tech. Uh, West Texas State. Came out. Oh, Eric is just so happy to be here. He's his guy. I'll leave. Well, the crowd now becomes a big part of this story because they're acting as if this is indeed the Super Bowl game. They are really fired up. The New Orleans Saints, of course, with a win tonight uh -huh. to tie the Rams. They play San Diego here 
next week. Then the final game of the season, they will meet the Rams, whom they lost to earlier in the season. Chandler's foot to the right. Tony Galbraith. And Galbraith, like Muncy, breaking tackles. He could have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. He was not. He gains three. It'll be second and seven. Eric, Eric Felton, Felton, Texas nope. Tech boy. Rookie. 53 yard return for Felton. They have a basketball goal out at the Saints practice field. And Eric yesterday, well, he's he's listed as six foot, but he's pushing it if he's six foot tall. But he was so easy to just step up there and dunk that ball. Great acceleration spring his legs. Second down, Archie Manning calling his own plays, looking over the defense, is constantly adjusting. He hangs it up for Chandler. Oh, he had to come down with both feet. He did not. He oh. had to come down with both feet inbounds. He did not. Inc incomplete. I'm sure he's right. It just looks from this angle that he did bounce down in there. We'll see it. Design play. Now, what is oh. the way? Hey, wait a minute, fella. Uh, well, if you look at it uh, again, I think you'll see one leg in. Uh, and then he lands on the back. Uh, all he's got to have. Is those, he catches the ball in. He's got to have both feet in. come in. There's one, two. There's one, two. Now that's in. Now we'll hear more of a hue and cry for officiating through videotape, which will be absolutely chaotic as far as I'm concerned. Well, you're right. But the guy that called it, Frank, was on the outside of him out of bounds. And he couldn't see where his feet were. Back to the action. Third down and eight. Over the middle. Oh, what a, we told you Galbraith was a receiver. Oh. Tony Galbraith. Uh, uh, oh, a truly great catch on the graphic we showed you earlier. I said there was a point I wanted to make. Galbraith had 214 receptions. That's his 250. Chuck Muncy had 108. This is why we talked about Galbraith's ability as a receiver. It is super. That Look is it. unbelievable. He even turned in the air and right. reached back with the right hand and got it. Not bad coverage that time by Monty Johnson. The yeah, on for the conversion. Super effort by Tony Galbraith. Got 45 receptions coming into tonight. They use him like a tight end. And New Orleans. To the happiness of this jam packed crowd has moved out on top. We'll look again. Well, I just want to sit back and watch it. The ball was actually, I thought it was going to be overthrown, and it would have been most of the time. <laughs> Hard to cover. Monty, Monty Johnson's job, a very difficult one, covering a very speedy Galbraith coming out of that backfield on that tight circle. Almost impossible. You can see 45 receptions, only one touchdown. And if you think those stats are good, last year he caught 74. That average per catch is good, too. They lead the league in that average yards gain per pass attempt. The premium hits it. Ira Matthews. Flag is down as Matthews goes down at the 30-yard line. Ira Matthews. This will be against Oakland. Yeah, I think it was, they were flipping number 84. Illegal use of hands against Oakland. 84 is Rich Mowdy. He usually figures in there pretty good. Yeah, they love Mowdy here. So Oakland suddenly in a bind. One turnover on Illegal Stabler. Illegal use of the hands on the kick return team, number 56, first down. Jeff Barnes, illegal use of hands, open Raiders. One turnover by Stabler, one mistake, overthrowing Gasper, Felton taking it off, giving New Orleans field position. Manning quickly striking with the brilliant help of Galbraith on the receiving end, and now Oakland in terrible field position. At their own 16-yard line, Whittington gets the call. Whittington. Loses perhaps a yard as Fettersfield, a rough, tough middle linebacker, has been around for a while. He'll hit you as hard as anyone in, in the league. Hey, he gave you a good recognition that time, Frank, on Fettersfield's part because he escaped that middle linebacker position, read the off tackle thing in a hurry, got in there, made 
actually hit him uh, behind the line of scrimmage. We have two critical games coming up. Pittsburgh at 11 and 3 against Houston at 10 and 4 next Monday, and then Denver at 10 and 4 now against San Diego at 10 and 4 now. The winner of that game will win. Second and 11. Sabler. Oh boy, trying to. Get it into a small pocket to Rich Martini and drills it into the ground incomplete third and 11. The winner of the Denver San Diego game will as I was saying be the winner of the AFC West. In the meantime Oakland in very very difficult position. You see the graphic on Fetterspiel. We have talked about him. Missed one game in seven and a half years. That's pretty good durability mark there. Gene Upshaw the Raiders hasn't missed a game since joining the Raiders back in 67. This is Mike Fultz. He's coming out of the ball game, holding his left arm. For Stabler, as he considers a third and 11, he completed his first seven on the night. So then he's had one interception and two inter incompletions. And as so often happens in this flow of a game, once New Orleans got the break on the turnover, got the field position scored, they seem a different team on defense. Well, that first drive by Oakland, you couldn't draw it up any better. They just did it all, just exactly the way you want to. The prices may have changed, the crowds may have grown, the stadium become different, but emotion still plays a key role in football. Third and 11. Oh, they Screen. got the set up. Van Egan. Van Egan balls out to the 25. He'll be short of a first down. Oakland short. will have to punt. And we are beginning to see some new twists in the league in recent games. Flag is down over there, isn't it? There is a flag down. Could have been a late hit. Yep, by 37. Tom Myers, if it's 37. That's right. He's the one they say plays that safety like a linebacker. He's not that big, but he'll really hit him. So will Ray Brown. He's an exceptional player. The and best. kicking from their own 30 yard line they have a first and 10 at their 39 yard line Whittington behind Van Egan doesn't like it try it over there <laughs> he really worked for that he earned every bit of it four yard pickup it'll be second and six Mike Foltz back in the lineup defense will be made to stop for New Orleans so that used to work down at Quero Texas I know that he could run it back and forth back and forth there he is it's a briskly played football game. There has been steady offensive action. 8.35 remaining in the first half. 14 to 7. Saints over the Raiders. The lead by New Orleans. The end result of an interception, a turnover. Stable. <laughs> All right. He goes down. Don Reese was there first. <laughs> Reese could be saying something like it. I missed you the first time when I came in the front door. I had to come through the back door and get you. This is Don Reese we mentioned earlier. Acquired from Miami. Grooms has been the number one PC pushing O'Shaw around. Missed you there. Now look out, Kenny. I'm going to come in the back door. Well, Reese came right back at him. Excellent play. Reese and Crowder <laughs> with Miami. Well, look at that. That looks, yeah, that's a headache right there. There's no question about that. He says, what Lester, happened to me? Lester Hayes. The sack was back to the 37-yard line. Third down and 12. Cliff Branch comes into the lineup. Three wide receivers. Brunson is in there, as is Martini. Oh, this is Branch, yeah. and Branch has a first down. Did that play? Well, that was beautiful, yeah. because Branch knew exactly where he was, just far enough for the first down, and Stabler, with his pinpoint accuracy, whipped it in there. Really is important because they needed about 12, 13 yards. You see a slow trot down to the outside. Just curl right back in behind that linebacker. There's your first down. Branch did not start tonight. We were surprised. Rich Martini started. We asked why. They said it's a coaching decision. So Branch comes in. Big play. Gets the first down inside New Orleans territory. The ball close to the 49. And now Branch remains in the lineup. Split to the left. 
And still the two tight ends. Top of your screen, 88, 87, Chester and Casper. Going for Brad Stabler. Oh, and just overthrown by maybe a half a step. Eric felt it defensively. And Stabler trying to get it all in one play. He also knows he was close on getting it that time, too, Frank. He dropped you out a number two wash bucket down there, and he just missed uh, about a yard. You may possibly see a repeat. Would not be surprised on that. But <laughs> Stabler with the 30 interceptions of a year ago during the offseason, very unhappy with criticism by management that he was the cause of the Raiders' biggest problems. Come back this year. He had 17 coming in tonight. He now has 18 interceptions for the season. And offside. Chester offsides. And Whittington down to the 44-yard line. That'll come back. Oakland beginning to make mistakes, problems for themselves. That penalty in evidence, the stable mistake in others. You mentioned Kenny and his and his boss, Al Davis. Frank, today I said to Al, do you talk to Stabler? He said, well, he goes past me and he says, how you doing, Al? And I say, okay, Kenny. How are you? <laughs> That's about it. 88, offense, offside, second down. So instead of third and five, it'll be second down, 15. It was Al Davis who felt that Stabler was not properly conditioned a year ago, and he felt that, therefore, Kenny, not at optimum efficiency, was the key to the downfall of the Raiders a year ago. Two wide receivers once again. Brunson, Martini, and Branch. Stabler throws it away. Lois Groom drops Stabler. It'll be third and 15. One of the tough things about trying to throw a screen, if you don't just, you got to slow them down a little bit at the line. Grooms, the top pass rusher for the New Orleans Saints, led them for the past two years, 77-78. Out of Tennessee Tech. The Raiders are going for their 15th consecutive winning season this year. They want that very badly. It's been a remarkable yeah. record. Oh, yeah, it is. But, you know, a lot of times you, you, you use this as an excuse, but they've had 34 people that have been starters this year, which gives you an indication that things are not all just set and settled out and open. Three wide receivers stay in the game. Third down, 15. Stay so down. Hung it out there. It was a long sideline pass. Rich Martini was open for a moment. Defensively, Chapman got back. Incomplete. Fourth down, the Raiders will punt. I thought that was a pretty gutsy move by Chapman, as a matter of fact. I because did if too. he didn't get there, there's nobody else Good out ball. there. He's got him man for man. Not really a play fake, but they're all trying to hold it in there. It is a long sideline pattern. But look, if he doesn't get there, so those ifs and whatever you call it, he had a... Well, Chapman's had two good plays. Remember the hit on Winnington that nullified an apparent pass catch. So the young man is worth taking a closer look at. Great guy, third in the league. behind Gruff of Kansas City and Jennings of New York. And this is a man they love here in New Orleans. He does everything on their special teams. Rich Marty. Casper, an unusually low kick, not a good kick, and Marty has a chance to run it out to the 33-yard line. 34-yard attempt by Ray Guy, hustling down there for Oakland, Derek Ramsey. We have 639 remaining in the first half. New Orleans, 14, the Raiders, 7, we'll be back. Also Saturday, World Cup boxing, and you'll see the young Americans under the brilliant coaching of Pat Nappy, named our Olympic coach again. He was in Montreal who figure to be as good or almost as good as the remarkable boxing team at Montreal. Frank, first and 10, 32-yard line. New Orleans has the football. Mike Harris in motion. Inside handoff, Muncie. And Muncie, out close to another New Orleans first down. I believe he has it. Right think, around the 43-yard line. I think they caught the Raider defense that time in a slight mix-up. They saw the man go in motion, tried to make a slight adjustment. Either Hendricks or Johnson, I couldn't, not for sure which, moved to the inside, they came back to the outside. I know that, man. I saw him last night down on Bourbon Street. I think Chuck was waiting for Monday Night Football. I he think they've all been excited about it. Really, really having a night. Ball just inside the 43, first and 10 New Orleans. I Harris, but out to the right by Archie Manning. Out to the left, top of your screen. Brilliant receiver, Wes Chandler. 
New Orleans. Offside. He says, now, I know there was a snap count, but it seems to me I forgot Henry what it Child. was. Henry Childs. Henry Childs. Tied in. Mm -hmm. Five offense. A lot of attention for these young New Orleans Saints. Again, the best season they ever put together in 12 years was last year, 7 and 9. They have never been 500. Here they are with an opportunity to get into the playoffs. Archie Manning, who suffered through a lot of injuries in his career, having another super season, passing at 60%, 12 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. He's came into tonight and he's thrown the ball 94 times without an interception. He's only been sacked 12 times all year, so you know they're protecting him well. And he also is very agile. He moves around well. First and 15. Flag is down. This is Childs. And the gift of tight end moves back to the original line of scrimmage, but again, a flag is down. Phil Villapiano defensively there against Childs. Regardless of what the penalty is and whom it's against, you have to like the way Manning diversifies his receivers. He does. He really, he's got good ones. That was one of the main reasons you can diversify him. Childs has been kind of an un sung hero at the tight end position. We usually hear about the Chesters and Caspers and Russ Francis kind of guys and Billy Joe Dupree's, but Childs has been right up there at the top almost every year with a number of receptions. This might be a penalty. Eligible man downfield in the offense. 89. Uh -huh. 89. Uh, he must have been lined up in uh, illegal formation. All right. Let's see if they might have missed this shot over here. This is Childs coming out. Yeah, they, they probably had other things to do. Well, I don't believe that was a face mask. I don't think it was a face mask. No, it was just Villapiano saying, don't it's, forget I'm here. It was under the mask. And the formation, since Wes Chandler is a wide receiver, the formation must have been wrong, or Chandler was either on the line of scrimmage or set back when he should not have been. Well, well they're a little upset over on the New Orleans sideline, as you can see. Ineligible man downfield, offensively number 85. First down. Wait a minute. Well, then he was in the wrong formation. Yes. There must have been a man on the line of scrimmage outside of the tight end, Henry Childs. And Manning was telling his coaches that the official misread the formation. That's exactly what he was doing. To no avail. Ball all the way back to the 28-yard line. They must get to the 47-yard line of Oakland for a first down. First at about 25. Chandler split to the left. Out to the right is Ike Harris. Chandler in motion. Manning for Childs. Good defensive play by Monty Johnson. In you know, the Frank, we talked about the fact that some of these New Orleans kids are on Monday night football for the first time. And Don asked Manning directly, you've played on Monday night football, others haven't. Will it hurt or help? Well, I hope it affects us in that we play real well. I know uh, our people are real excited. Of course, this city uh, is real excited. And, uh, of course, the, the paramount thing is we're still in a, in a playoff picture. But uh, you people coming in for this game just uh, kind of puts cream on it. It's, it's a big day for the uh, New Orleans Saints, so we hope to perform real well. Archie Manning talking about Monday Night Football. Second down, 25 is his concern at the moment. Manning. All right. Ooh. Finds Muncie out over the 40 to the 41 yard line. Still far short of the first down. It'll still be third and long. Monty Johnson there defensively. Third and about 12. When you've got two guys like Muncie and Galbraith, there is just no estimating the number of things you can do offensively. Remember I said earlier, while Earl Campbell is indisputably the greatest single runner in football, almost indisputably some in Chicago might argue for Peyton he can't go downfield for a pass with anything like the speed of a Muncie. 613 remaining in the half New Orleans on top of Oakland 14 to 7 third and 12 and he fires quickly and Muncie tries to one hand it incomplete he was in the arms of Jack Tatum and New Orleans was cut with Manning felt the pressure from Oakland. The late blitz that time by Rod Martin, a linebacker. He uh, stayed his position just for a moment, let him set there blocking, and he had speed enough to get back there before Manning could really get along comfortably. Rick Partridge will punt and drop being deep as the rookie from Wisconsin, who last year led the nation 
at the University of Wisconsin, averaging over 16 yards per punt return. He's not even close to it thus far this season, with a little over five yard average. Partridge hangs it high, fair catch call for it, a flag is down as Partridge was pounded by Mike Davis. That will be a first down for New Orleans. Well, he looked like he may be hurt a little bit or he may be putting on a little bit either way. They got him a first down. But Partridge has really, boy, when you think you got Partridge and your Permian, as you mentioned at the top of the show, Frank, they had their number one draft choice. Well, let's, let's take, take a look, a look at, at this right. and see if it was a great piece of acting. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, me. That was one of your finest performances in the history of TV. That's yeah. an Emmy if I ever saw one. He says, oh, my gosh. Now, how can you do that to me? And then he had the audacity to get up and limp off. <laughs> well, it might have hurt when he fell. Let's see if he's not grinning a little bit. Oh, he took a pretty hard tumble. He certainly did it on his own. Yes, indeed. I'm just teasing, you know, me. Just an old He's nominated fun. now for an Oscar. Yeah. First down, 46-yard line. The New Orleans Saints, they're on top by seven. Six minutes remaining in the first half. Screen in the middle, and it's Galbraith with running room. Oh, me. Oh, me. Galbraith gets another first down at the 34-yard line. Lester Hayes made the save, and Galbraith... Had he been able to break the tackle of Hayes, might have gone in. Let's watch him stay close to Robert Wood. Old Bob Wood, 65, his tackle out there. Really well set up, Frank, right in the middle. You see Woods out here in front of him. Tony says, I'm no dummy. You hit him first. Let me go around. And Wood made a cleaner block there. I think Goldberg would have picked up 10 or 15 more yards. He really can scoop once he catches it. Can he? What an asset. So smooth and so fluid, Tony Goldberg. Ball at the Oakland Raider 34-yard line, first and 10. Draw uh -huh. to Muncy, huge hole. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Now that is beautiful, spectacular running by Muncy. Oh. To the three, first and goal. Mike Davis saved the touchdown, made a pretty good tackle. But man, you're right, is this smooth. And look at the big hole up there. They think they got him a really good center, potential all-pro center, John Hill. Muncy just goes through that. That's a good block. That was Chandler block. That's right. Davis came over and put the stop. Nice block by Chandler to spring down there for him. Saints are playing inspired football. 31-yard pickup by Chuck Muncy. First and goal. The ball at the three-yard line. The tight end offense is in. Manning addressing the hometown fans for a little quiet. Muncy. Goodbye. Oh. They are going to mark it short of a touchdown. <laughs> he did. The ball did hit short. Oh, oh man. Uh, what an acrobatic move. Phil Villapiano upended Muncy as he tried to hurdle in the end zone. It, he could have hurt himself on this one. I thought he fell pretty hard on that shoulder. Galbraith is making a good attempt at a block. Did it? Fell over there. That's Davis again, isn't it? That's, oh, man. Wow. That's a hard way to fall. Good call by the headlinesman. Second and goal. Muncie. No question this time. Straight away, let's just try to hold them down. Bill Piano try to get there. They all get there a little bit late. That might have just a nice move. Just too much of Chuck Munson. 6'3, 235 pounder. Garo Yakrimian on for the conversion. The Young Saints not at all awed by the incredible winning record of the Open Raiders over the years.
front to seven. The Saints over the Raiders with 324 remaining in the first half. Garo Yepremian, who had a little fun. We were kidding earlier, but talking about our broadcasting team, he was talking about Don. He said he didn't like his tone. He said he always sings that whatever that song is a little too early. Turn off the lights. <laughs> he hits it. Ira Matthews for Oakland at the seven. Look out, Ira. Ira Matthews was going to reverse that. He knew better, and he was right. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Rich Marty, who is so effective on the special team for the New Orleans Saints. And there's the man. Great record at the University of California. Over 3,000 yards rushing there before being drafted number one. 38 touchdowns. The best ever by a University of California running back. Just 13 rushes for 105 yards. Tremendous performance. You have to be impressed with this whole New Orleans team. Undoubtedly their best effort of the year thus far because they're going against the team that has had the best record of all teams since Monday Night Football began. On the first down, Staber with the screen to Whittington. Got some trouble out Sylvester there. with a block in front. And Whittington is sprung to the 39-yard line. First down, Oakland. That was beautifully set up screen pass. A little crisscross the backfield to the other opposite side. They got him. The linebacker, Borleon, that we mentioned earlier, had him isolated. He was the only guy out there. I think that was one Sylvester block. It's like good, Don. That man out in front of it, 66 Steve Sylvester. He has been something special for Oakland this year. He's played left tackle. He's played right guard for an injured Mickey Marvin. He's played at center when Dave Dalby was hurt. Sabler on first and ten. This is the football. Oh. All the Saints in the area. This Alex Price it just comes up with it for New Orleans. Slipped out of his hand. So this New Orleans team, totally inspired, has a chance to build up what could be an insurmountable lead. I think you're right. He tried to pull it back down. It came back, swinging the ball, and just... Slipped out of his hand. We've talked about runners doing that. Alex Price comes up with it for New Orleans. Bourbon Street will be a little rowdy tonight. That sure it is. looks like it's heading in that direction. <laughs> Oakland came out. They moved the football first possession for a touchdown using over seven minutes. New Orleans answered with a touchdown drive of over six minutes. It's been all New Orleans ever since. They're on top 21 to 7. They have the ball at the 28-yard line of the Raiders at the moment following a Staber fumble. Manning crossing his backs. Going for Tiles. Oh, oh. touchdown. Henry Tiles. Oh, oh, marvelous catch. Oh, is Manning throwing pinpoint passes. And does he have the receivers to get them? What a performance in the first half by that quarterback. Well, Howard, it's just amazing again. I, I call it a good throw, but once again, what a terrific catch. Man, that was, that ball was right in there. Henry Childs, he's just got so much balance on offense. All the receivers, you'll see Childs coming off the line. You know, everybody better start top stopping him at the line. Again, not bad defensive coverage, but he's got speed enough just to kind of run away from him, stretch out there and take it. And I'll Ooh. tell you, once again, the defender, in this case, Mike Davis, was not in bad position. That ball was thrown where it had to be thrown. Just the way it was. Can't you see him? Aren't you saying, oh, shucks, guys, yeah. there's nothing. We used to do that out in Drew, Mississippi, every once in a while. Hello, Huck. They said he looked like Huckleberry Finn, and he had brittle bones. They said, who's that funny-looking guy, red-headed guy down there in Drew? His high school team never won more than they lost. They won five and lost five. I can't believe it myself. Garo, you're from the conversion. Saints have struck 28 to 7 of the Raiders will be back. Two turnovers. A Stabler interception on a deflection, which led to a New Orleans touchdown. A Stabler fumble, which one play later resulted in a New Orleans touchdown. And the Saints are out in front 28 to 7. Gary Premium to kick. Aaron Matthews is deep for Oakland along with Larry Brunson. And this will be Larry Brunson from the four. Brunson taken out of bounds and close to the 29-yard line. I want to remind you to be 
sure to join Barbara Walters and her guests Suzanne Summers, Sylvester Stallone, and Stevie Wonder in the Robert Walters special this Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific 9 p.m. Central. And earlier that evening, a Christmas special. John Denver and the Muppets at Christmas together. Wednesday night at 8 Eastern and Pacific, 7 Central, both coming away on ABC. <laughs> yeah, that might be the guy that turned the whole thing around, you know? Rick Hartreid, <laughs> yeah. fine method actors. Kept the New Orleans drive alive earlier with a beautiful fake of uh, roughing the punter. First and ten, Stabler. Van Egan. Egan for the first down out over the 40-yard line, and we are going to get the two-minute warning. Benny Stabler, who can put a lot of points on the scoreboard. It was two turnovers that has put Oakland deep in this hole. He has two minutes to work with, three timeouts, and another half. We'll be back. Giles, his 46th reception of the season, a touchdown. A touchdown from 28 yards out. And when he gives up in size, Childs, in terms of blocking, he certainly makes up for the fact that he can move deep downfield. He's leading all the top tight ends in the NFL, rather the NFC. As far in receptions, he can throw them way downfield. You saw it a moment ago. Dick Nolan, White Plains High School, Maryland, the then New York football Giants. First and ten, Oakland, 40-yard line. This is Russell. And Russell out to the 45-yard line. Taken there defensively by Durrell and Moore. Apart from Partridge's Stanislavski-like performance yes. on that kick penalty, the two keys to the game, the hurry-up offense on, go back to the game. Frank. Second and five. Complete to Branch. Better spell. Takes Branch, but not until he gets a first down at the 49-yard line. Kenny is going to try and run off another play. Seconds ticking away. One minute and 20 seconds remaining in the half. He knows if he can put six on the scoreboard, they're going to be back in this game. He had to call the play out to Branch, his wide receiver. A little low. Intended there for Larry Brunson. Incomplete. Stops the clock. 104 remaining. Oakland still with their three timeouts. The two keys to the game as we take a look at Conrad Dobler. Once of great repute. One with St. Louis is the roughest man in the league. But the two keys to the game. A. What Davis feared. Oakland's inability to contain the New Orleans offense. And B. The two critical turnovers. The interception by Felton. And then... A fumble by Stabler, both setting up instant touchdown field position for the Saints. The three wide receivers are in. Martini, 89. Brunson, 82. Branch, 21. Second and 10. Stabler, with a lot of time, fires it complete. That goes to Casper. And the hurry-up offense still in effect. Inside one minute remaining. The ball up to 37. Knows that ball is going down a little bit. Might mean that Kenny's throwing a little bit off his back foot. He got hit pretty hard a minute ago. Kenny has the time. He finds Van Egan. Van Egan breaks, almost breaks the tackle, but he gets to the 25-yard line as Staber continues to move the team. Now he calls timeout. He tried to save seconds. 30 seconds remaining, and Oakland has two timeouts. It's Next week, Pittsburgh against Houston. Let's take a look at the Steelers yesterday. First of all, an historic moment. That handoff from Bradshaw to Franco Harris. He rambled 34 yards to put him over 1,000 yards for the seventh time in his career, tying him with the immortal Jim Brown. The Steelers' attack on the day was led by Terry Bradshaw and by the tremendously resourceful receiver, number 88, Lynn Swan. That touchdown, an example. And then earlier, watch this. Bradshaw had thrown the flanker screen to Lynn Swan, and look at Lynn go. So swift. So the Steelers will travel to Houston to meet the Oilers in the AFC Central Showdown next Monday night. Well, and Howard, remember we in Houston, I can't imagine what it's going to be like this Monday night. Don't forget Alabama 
and ABC, the Sugar Bowl. And with Arkansas, this, this town's going to be colored with red, isn't it? They're going to have red everywhere. I would never underrate that team of Lou Holtz's. Story here, 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Kenny Staber has moved the Raiders downfield. They have the football. First and 10. The ball at the 25 yard line of the New Orleans Saints. They have two timeouts remaining. 30 seconds. And looks to attempt to get it into the end zone. Branch is in motion. Stabler. And it's complete to Whittington. He could not get out of bounds to stop the clock, however. And another timeout is expended. So Kenny Stabler is down to one timeout remaining in 20 seconds. We'll be back in the Superdome in just a moment. The preceding announcement was brought to you by the National nice Football League and one of the greatest linebackers ever to play this game, Dick Butkus. <laughs> back in the Super Bowl. Super Dome, brother. The ball at the 19-yard line, 20 seconds. A lot of strategy being discussed on either side of the field. Martini and Branch. Two wide receivers. Stabler drops the football again. He could have been in the arms of the defender. Alex Price was in there defensively. That's as big a play as you'll ever see. Because we're down to 14 seconds. If Oakland could get a touchdown, you've got yourself a pretty good shot at coming back to be in the ball game. And more than that, they had to use their final timeout. And nobody, it must be said in fairness, uses the clock better than that man, Kenny Stabler. He really is a wizard at it, Don. He, he really is. I think that if he has one drawback, it's maybe the fact that he's not quite as mobile as some of the other quarterbacks. You see a uh, well, guy like Bradshaw and, and Sight, for example, pick up really big games in this two-minute situation when the linebackers fall so far off. I think that's the one handicap Kenny, uh, Kenny has is he's just really not a threat to run. Glad you mentioned Sight. He's been so remarkable. Yeah, this year. yeah he really has. That was a good ball game uh, they had up in Cleveland. I think Art Modell is taking this all very calmly and quietly. <laughs> I don't think He Art's, never gets excited. No, he wouldn't get excited at all. <laughs> Going to have a good game at, uh, next week, boy. I guarantee you that when that Houston bunch welcomes the Pittsburgh Steelers down there, that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, it was wild down there a year ago when Miami rolled in. What a show Campbell put on that night. As did Bob Greasy. 14 seconds and a half. Third down and 12. Stabler hangs it in the end zone. A flag goes down. Defensively, back there was Eric Felton along with Ralph McGill. Now that's it. Gets New Orleans. Nine seconds on the clock. It'll go to the one-yard line. First and goal. Now, what do you do? Do you throw? Well, I defensive pass interference in the end zone. Number 20 on the defense. Be a first down on the one-yard line. First and goal on the one. Eric Felton, the man who got New Orleans started with an interception, guilty of the call. Now, keep in mind, Oakland does not have a timeout. I don't think you can't afford it to, to Nine run. seconds. You can't run. You've no. got to, you can throw twice, but you can't run. Unless you make it. Well, that's true. Play action. Casper misses. Clock to stop with four seconds. Uh, now your tough. decision. You're down 28 to 7. Do you get a sure three points? Well, maybe a sure because Oakland remembers <laughs> reach against Kansas City. That's right. That's exactly. You go for it. You're going to go for it. I think this again is a place where if you have the rollout quarterback, you do have the added dimension down there in a situation like this with no timeouts where he can roll to the outside. And Kenny might be able to do that. I don't know that they can do that kind of play, but I haven't seen him do it in a long time. This will be an interesting call. It's your last, last play, play anyway. Anyway. You can run. You can give it to Van Egan, perhaps. That's right. Whittington gets the call, gets the touchdown. All right. That's We've got a new ball game. That was well handled. That was fun. Well, last play, anyway, you could run. They actually even switched everybody up and go off the right side this time. You see Van Egan lead it, and Arthur Whittington comes in, and he's going for the strike. And Kenny Stabler, if you've been watching this game closely, he had two minutes and 18 seconds to work with. 
He got a big help from the interference call in the end zone, but he moved this Oakland football team down the field using all three timeouts in two minutes and 18 seconds. Again, the big plus, of course, the defensive call against Eric Felton in the end zone. Jim Breach. And they have used, well, they not used too much time. And Coach Smith defense number 60. <laughs> well, why not? I wonder if he's up there trying to slap that ball. Sometimes they'll get in front of the center, try to slap the ball a little bit right before the guy snaps it. Two That's weeks ago, as we mentioned before, Breach, with just a few seconds, a couple of seconds on the clock, against Kansas City, had a chance to tie that game up. I missed a field goal from just about this range. Nobody feels worse about it. And one of the great things we saw, we watched that game on television, Kenny Stabler walked out on the field, put his arm around Breach, right. and said, forget it. He didn't mean it, though. <laughs> That's 28 to 14. The Saints over the Raiders, but the Raiders battling back in the closing minutes of the first half. Stay with us. Halftime highlights coming your way. The Saints and the Raiders have taken the field once again as we are moments away from the beginning of the second half. We look at the statistics. New Orleans, who piled up at one point a club record 28 points in one quarter, 28 unanswered points. They did it with a couple of turnovers on the part of the Oakland Raiders. A deflected pass that was intercepted and a fumble by Stabler, both leading to New Orleans touchdowns. At the beginning of the ball game, New Orleans had marched the length of the field. Looked like they were going to control it. They had talked about ball control. They did just that. New Orleans settled down. They came right back and marched off a touchdown drive of their own. It took over six minutes. And then it was all New Orleans until the final two minutes and 18 seconds when Kenny Stabler took his team from the 21-yard line the length of the field. He had a lot of help from a defensive infraction by Eric Felton in the end zone. The story, 28 to 14, but it's far from over. The story, Chuck Muncie, among others. Al Davis said today, the one man I fear is Muncie. He just told me our defense isn't worth a darn. I'm disgusted. Didn't mince words about it. That's Dick Stanfield, one of the all-time great players that ever played. He coached with Dick Nolan out in uh, San Francisco, and of course he was the one holdover after Stram was fired that Dick kept. Great professional player at Detroit and Washington. Gary, your premium will kick off for New Orleans. Ira Matthews at 43. Do you left? He's back there with Todd Christensen. But it will be Matthews from his seven-yard line. And Matthews, that's New Orleans out to the 33-yard line, close to the 34, where we anticipate a offense that will be comprised of a two tight end offense. Again, you're looking at the import to this game for New Orleans. They need a win tonight to move into back into a tie with the Los Angeles Rams, who won in overtime over Minnesota yesterday. New Orleans next week will play San Diego here. Their final game of the year will be in the Los Angeles Coliseum. And for Oakland, they have the same record, but they are all but mathematically out of any potential playoff possibility. Oakland with the first and 10, and Arthur Whittington gets the call first, out over the 35, close to the 37. Ken Bordelon made the stop there for New Orleans. In theory, Oakland could still make the playoffs. Realistically, even if they win tonight, it's not likely. But uh, it's apparently Oakland's going to go right back to its original game plan, which is encouraging I think from that's the smart, point of view yeah. of competitive game. Now. Smart thing to do, I think, too, Howard, because they came in the first series of downs they had. Uh, then they moved right down to everything they wanted to. Branch was a starting flanker. Second down six, stable to the air. A lot of time. Incomplete. Intended there for Casper. Oh, and that Hughes yeah. defensively along with Feathersfield. They were right in the middle of that pattern. I think that's a good example of how you can, you, you're limited what you, what types of patterns you can run with that two tight end offense. They really are not in a position to do a great deal more than to do the crossing type patterns. You saw Chester come over. The, the pass was thrown late. And so, therefore, Chester had time to get over really in front and bring his defensive people over in front of Castro. But that's why you have to like Fettisfield. He has such tremendous range back there. He's going to be very hard to get out of there, even by Borderline, who knows so high. Third down, six. 
Saber again at the time, and it's almost picked off. Oh, that really was almost picked off. Tom Myers almost, and he might have turned that into six had he been able to hold on. He, he probably safe. won him. He the turned one into six this year. Look at him again, Don. Yeah, really. The Saints are tied with, or were coming into this game tied with the Redskins for most interceptions at 22. Kind of unusual that every defensive back and every linebacker has an interception this year, and this is the guy that has had six so far. Tarkenton won't forget Myers. He intercepted one on Fran in the end zone last year, ran it back in the opening game on 100 yards for a touchdown, and New Orleans won the game. Butch Monty awaits the punt of Ray Guy. This time Guy turns it over, gets the nose down. Monty takes it at the 12. Beautiful punt by Guy. And hustling down there was Rufus Best. 50 yard punt by Ray Guy, who had one earlier off the side of his foot and was way below his average, which was third in the NFL coming into tonight's play. There are a lot of weekly cliches, Rendon, in this game, but that last Oakland series was important because they wanted to establish something immediately, get a score on the board, and really get back into this game. They couldn't do it. That's an indication that what you're talking about, Oakland has not been able to stop New Orleans either. We saw Oakland do it the first series, but they've only stopped the Saints one drive. That was their first. First and ten, the Saints, their own 25-yard line. They have a 28 to 14 lead. Their first possession here in the third quarter. I Harris in motion, the handoff to Chuck Muncy. And Muncy slips out of the grasp of Rod Mark, but he's taken out of bounds after a gain of a yard, a yard and a half. Frank, I don't want to depart the storyline, but a guy came in to say hello to the three of us who I think deserves mention. One of the best defensive ends you ever saw. Rich Jackson of Denver. Now teaching here in New Orleans. He just wanted to come up and say hello. And it's nice to see a guy so valuable to the community who has been such a great player. Second down, eight. And Ted Hendricks defensively, again for Oakland, they were trying to cover Galbraith with the linebacker. That's a very difficult thing to do. He's a gifted receiver with a lot of speed. Frank, it's one of those patterns that you really just hope you can complete in practice because it was an out and go. You see Hendricks had him to the outside. The ball was thrown before Galbraith made his move, and he was behind Hendricks by a good three or four yards. They talk about touch in quarterbacks. That was, was nice just touch. laid yeah. up there. Nice touch. There you yeah. Beat one of the best linebackers around for so many years, Ted Hendricks. The first down for New Orleans inside the 43-yard line of the Open Raiders. Play action by Archie Manning. Looking for Ike Harris. He was covered, so Manning does what he does so well, runs with the football. He doesn't do it as often as he did when he came up a few years ago, but he gets good yardage. Give him six, it'll be second down and four. But that's the mobility Don Meredith has been talking about. You know, I, yeah, I got a funny feeling that time that something must have gone wrong back there because he didn't waste much time to move. You know what I mean? Hi, Mom, please send one. <laughs> the playoff to He was not. looking deep to Ike Harris, and Lester Hayes was all over Harris. Is that what he wanted? He just moved so quickly. He looked, he moved to the outside and made his run. But he does. You know, Archie is... They're trying to get him not to run. They don't like to see the quarterbacks run, particularly when you see those two guys he's got lined up right behind him. Second and four. The ball at the 37-yard line. Muncie in the side handoff. Gets the first down. Down to the 31-yard line. Frank, they had a four-man line that time, but they still had a guy lined up over the center. Been several names for that type of defense. I don't know really what you call it. Overshift. We used to call it a Frisco defense. But they try to... Again, I think the center, John Hill, is doing a heck of a job in the middle of that line. They, they're really high on Sanders also at left guard. They think Robert Wood is potential all-pro. These yep. guys are doing a good job. Hello, Dick. Remember all the mornings we drove into Yankee Stadium together? You and Landry and Robustelli? What did he say? On first down, Manny tries to get the screen to Muncy. Oh, Pat Tume is Defensively, on Defensively, your old teammate, Pat Tume out there, Donald. Now, we talked about that once before. He never was my teammate. You guys had me convinced one time that he was, but he really wasn't. But there he is. Well, he's convinced he was. Well, maybe so. You know, that got a little fuzzy that time of uh, your life. 
used to drive in, go to a little coffee shop across the street from the stadium. On arrival, Gifford would always be there you with the coffee already in the container, a seated roll and butter. Nothing has changed. You can always count on Frank. <laughs> <by> golly, Frank. <laughs> Second down, 18. Ball, 40-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Good defensive play. Two men. Galbraith oh. down inside the 30. Oh. Be third down and eight. What a show Galbraith is giving you folks tonight. What a receiver he is. He has put together his the thighs. <laughs> his thighs are like 34 inches. Yeah, that's just unbelievable. Five receptions. Galbraith tonight, 87 yards. Big play, I feel personally, for Manning right here. 28 to 14, they lead. They could get it in. They would put Oakland in an entirely different situation. Quarterback draw, I believe it was, and Dave Pair was all over <laughs> he Manning. Sure was. He sure was. That's exactly what they're trying to do, Frank. They have the middle linebackers out of the middle. They try to split those two guys up front. They pairs too big, too strong. And out comes Rick Partridge, presumably to punt. And Russell Erksleben, their number one draft pick, great place kicker from Texas, been available. Of course, he's been out most of the season. They might be tempted to go for a field goal from this range. It's probably out of the Crimean's area. Whistle had blown before the ball was snapped. Lester Hayes made a move on Partridge. And Oakland says they want timeout. So we have 11 06 remaining in the third quarter. Fourth down for New Orleans when we return to the Superdome in a moment. Oakland apparently concerned as to what were the real intentions of the New Orleans Saints. Called timeout. They discussed it, and Partridge remains in the game, hunting position. Ira Matthews in just a short safety as he is anticipating Partridge's angle for the corner. And he's hit a beauty. Oh, man, did he ever. Which is exactly why Dick Nolan called for that play. <laughs> because he no, he doesn't believe that Yepremian any longer has the range to have kicked a field goal from there, which is why Shula dropped Darrow and kept the rookie from Oklahoma, Uvi Von Schumann. But it also did raise some questions because you're sitting there on the 32-yard line and you can play a lot of the armchair quarterbacks. You say, well, now, and I, that's why I think Oakland called timeout because I think they were confused, too. And this Partridge, he, he's got to be a bargain, man. They picked him up for basically nothing. And look where Stabler is. Stabler inside his own three-yard line. Van Egan. Muscles it out over the five, close to the seven-yard line for a gain of about four, where it'll be second and six. Derek Jensen, uh, rather than Van Egan, carrying the ball, and an injured New Orleans Saint is Alex down. Price, I believe, Frank. Alex, Alex Price. Price. Well, they did what they wanted to do. They just nailed him back in there. That's now exactly that, right. Let them have the ball, but they got an awful long way to go, and... More than likely, it's going to take them a good while to do that. They haven't just been blowing them away. Price remains on the artificial turf. We'll be back in a moment. Price appears to be all right. We looked at a replay. It appeared as if he had been hit by his own teammate, Ken Bord Bordelon. That's pretty creative. That certainly is. At the grade school level. Second down, six. <laughs> Eric Jensen, 31. And Mark Van Egan. The elephant backfield pair, if you will. You just won't be a nice guy, will you? Yeah. Uh, Van Egan. All right. And Van Egan. Close to a first down. Very pretty piece of work. Not bad. No flag thrown on that play. We will get a measurement as Van Egan up very close to a first down. Out around the 13-yard line. I believe he has it. Gonna be close. A little trivia question for you two guys. Who was the guy that led the AFC in rushing before Earl Campbell came into the league? Before Earl Campbell? Yeah. Led the AFC in rushing. It's a good question, isn't it? How about Mark Van Egan? 
You devil, you knew all along, oh, Frank. That's right. That is right. I got one for you. All right. How do you keep a turkey in suspense? <laughs> you know that one, Howard? I'll tell you later. I've got a different answer for that one, and now is not the place. Okay. First and ten. Jensen. To the 17-yard line. Derek Jensen. Well, if you really want to play trivia, the New Orleans Saints have three guys who were the MVP in the Super in the Sugar Bowl down here at one time in their collegiate careers. Archie Manning. That's one of them. Second down five. Ball at the 18-yard line. Remember, they started from inside their own three. Ooh, Ooh, Van Egan. And from Peter. the yard line in Fettersfield. I told you about Fettersfield. He is so uh, He is light. good. I'm certainly not putting Fettersfield down at all. I think he's doing a great job. And in a real key position in this type of defense, you see, once again, it's very hard to get a, a guy out to block him. Right. The whole design of the flex is to keep those guards and center off of him and let him go do it. He did a good job about that. That's it. As I've said before, Kentucky turns out a lot of tough kids. Yep. The master of the Eagles, another example, linebacker. Third and two. Stabler with play option. Picked off. Oh, oh, no. No. Good line. Touchdown, New Orleans. Oh, no. Kenny knows. Under terrible pressure, he released the ball when he shouldn't have. He got hit when he did it, too. Ken Bordelon, who played his collegiate football here at LSU. Second interception this season, and it puts the Saints up for another touchdown. A little play action fake. You'll see coming from the outside. Man, they just really put a good on it. That was Bennett. Barry Bennett got there. Kenny got off very slowly and is walking off the sideline. I think you're right. He tried to force it a little bit. This oftentimes happens. He knows he got to get up there. There's a little pressure. You see him try to move. He's trying to get it away. Desperation. Just desperation. Well, that was a pretty good interception. Bordelon went way up in the air to get it. Uh, good athlete, Frank. Really a good all-around athlete. He had a bruised knee earlier in the game. Was out for a few plays. Obviously, the bruise feels better now. The premium on a very busy night. <laughs> the Raiders 35-14 we have about half the third quarter remaining and we'll be back in a moment Walker who has not seen much action thus far in this year for Oakland 7 of 15 one touchdown and an interception is warming up in the sideline you saw Staples shake it up and we don't know whom we'll see a quarterback at this moment for Oakland Gary Ufremian set to kick Aaron Matthews takes it at the 8 yard line Got some room over there. And Matthews. Out to the 38-yard line. Good return by Matthews. Kenny's coming back. Stabler. Back. Into the ball game. Tell you quickly, tonight and every night, as long as the situation in Iran remains critical, ABC News will present a special report. They'll do it every night after your local late news. ABC News will keep you up to date on the Iranian situation and all the news weeknights on the World News Tonight. It's interesting. Plunkett came in, went back out. Van Egan and Whittington, the setbacks now. Van Egan gets the call, and Van Egan runs into a peck of trouble in the form of Don Reese. Uh, Lake number 74, Durland Moore. Line of scrimmage, that's it, second and ten. There are a number of things at play here tonight. A, New Orleans' quest for a playoff berth. B, the fans, for the first time after so many long years, seeing that they have a fine football franchise and team in this city. And C, it's the NFC against the AFC. More on that in a moment. Second down long. Stabler again with time. Hits Branch. Branch has the first down at the 49-yard line of New Orleans. Eric Felton defensively, but that ball thrown on a line. Kenny Denlinger of the Washington Post wrote a piece just the other day 
and the overwhelming superiority of the AFC in interconference competition. He's not the first to have done it. Bill Wallace of the Times did it in New York. But they were 31 and 11 going into this weekend, the AFC. Atlanta shocked, stunned San Diego, and look at what New Orleans is doing. Let's On go. first and 10. Casper with a leaping catch for another first down. Close to the 38-yard line. Fettersfield there defensively, along with Eric Felton. I get, get the feeling, Frank, what they're really doing is to try to protect against the, the deep ones. We saw this kind of openness by the receivers in the first series of downs. Actually, that's Fettersfield pretty close to Casper in there, but the secondary guys are really getting deep. They don't want him to hit them quick with a bomb. Get back in there. Right. You know, another thing about Oakland, they don't play very well on the road. They've only won one game this year. They beat Denver on the road. The rest of them, they've lost. That's true, and they have never been a good team, as I noted at the start of the game on artificial turf. Stabler appearing over intently. They marked the ball to the 39-yard line. is inches short of a first down, so it'll be second and inches. But realistically, three Stabler turnovers, the intercept by Felton, the intercept by Bordelon, and then the fumble, and that's the margin of difference. Three New Orleans touchdowns result. So it remains essentially a game of mistakes. That little punt that they tried on the 32-yard line looks good right now, too, it does. It really does. Yeah. But I still think Garrow can kick 40 yards. <laughs> Second and inches. Van Egan, huge gaping hole, and Van Egan down to the 29-yard line. Erlen Moore defensively for New Orleans, along with Tom Myers. I think, Gifford, we should congratulate, in effect, a colleague of yours, a man at University of Southern California, Mr. Charles White, on winning the Heisman Trophy today. What a year he's had. He had a great year, and congratulate him, frankly, for surviving it, carrying the ball some 30 times. Also, congratulations to another great athlete, Billy Sims, who was second in the balloting. On first and ten, and Branch Ooh. does not hold on deep. Ooh. He had Hit it. there by Clarence Chapman, and I'll tell you, Chapman, will, he has put some poundage on out there tonight. But yeah. again, Cliff had it. Look at it isolated, Dandy. But, you know, once again, Howard, look, you don't see anybody. He's got man coverage. And that was just a real good close by Chapman. He saw, he saw the ball was thrown, put his shoulder down, and drove through the receiver. Cliff just couldn't hold on to it. Second down, 10. 6.08 remaining in the third quarter. Frank Gifford and Lone Howard Cosell and Don Meredith. How about that? A lot of excitement. The sellout here in the Superdome in Orleans. Sabler over the middle to Casper. That is feel again. All right, they're in there. They'll mark that all the way back up to the 23-yard line for a game of about five. It'll be third and five. As Fettersfield, who really, I, I think he's played, he's played super for the last seven years, but under Dick Nolan's use of the flex, which is so similar to the Dallas Cowboys and Tom Landry's flex, well, they kind of they keep that middle linebacker fairly free. He really does love it, Frank. They that's keep what the guys off him. He must, he must enjoy it. I remember when Tom set up the 4-3 defense and kept a fellow named Huff fairly free. Made him a superstar. He probably did that in the back of the car when y'all driving into work. Right exactly there. right. <laughs> Third and five. Oh, and a pass that should have been caught by Booker Russell. And he had insult to injury, just knock him down after it's all over. Yeah, you, know, you guys Tabor are also out. went down. Yeah. That was a little tough. That was Derek Ramsey, Ramsey number 84 ready. over there. Wide open, Kenny kind of just blings it in there, hit him right in the bad spot. Didn't catch it with his hand, but it going through to his stomach. Had the first down. So on fourth down and down, 35 to 14. Oakland leaves the offensive unit on. Branch flip to the left. Casper lined up in a short wing back. Raymond Chester's a tight end. He's got it open. Come on, that Kenny, right there. Casper has the first down at the 15. He moved out of that pocket a little bit, had to. They had him pretty well covered on the initial timing of that pattern. Kenny moved a little bit to the outside. You'll see how Rich Casper, I mean, uh, Dave Casper moves around on the other side, just keeps running. And he picked him up the first down. That was a big fourth down. 
Better still, Frankie, you're talking about he's reading it now, dropping it back into the other side. He sees Casper coming across. Really not too effective. If you can throw in between those linebackers, that's what you try to get the quarterback to do. Don't try to throw that thing hard right by him. Casper's sixth reception of the night, 48 of the season on first and 10. Stabler right must branch. Oh. Good. Uh, good. good defensive play back there. Hey, that man made up. Clarence Chapman. Chapman. Yeah. That kid is having some night. Great recovery because they had him beat. Branch went down, ran a little zig out route. Chapman goes to the inside. You're not going to see the pattern that much, but again, Kenny had some time to throw. But look at him close right here. Went into that outside arm. Didn't bump into him, knocked it away. I tell you, that's a good play by Chapman because Cliff Branch had put a strong move to the inside. Chapman took it and then was still able to recover. Second and ten. Top of your screen. Again, it's Branch. Branch on a little delay underneath. Chapman misses the tackle, but he sends Branch spinning down to about the eight-yard line. Uh, We're going to be third and four. It's a broad gap now, 21 points, but you've got to admit, folks, there's no quit in Oakland and no quit in Stabler. No, they can have a lot of things happen, as they say. Ed Beard, the linebacker coach that Dick Nolan brought with him from San Francisco 49ers there on the sideline. A lot of his cronies around him. Eddie Hughes, whom he played with with the Giants. Yep, he's married to his sister. Mm -hmm. He's his offensive coordinator. Oh, Wiggins is a good one, too, as they drive home. Oh, that. Oh, Whittington, he got down low, and I don't think they even could see him. Oh, they, that's right. He had his nose to the ground. He just was scooting along. You know, Arthur Whittington was named to the SMU's All-Decade Team. Are you ready for that? 1970-79. But he made it as a kickoff return guy. He couldn't beat out Alvin Maxson and, uh, and Morris. Quarterback. Did you there. make the all-decade team of the 60s? I made it not running in the 50s. I was big and not running. <laughs> Whittington went off limping slightly. He had missed seven weeks earlier this year with a sore ankle. First and goal, Oakland. Van Egan, touchdown, Oakland. Looked pretty easy. All right. I like that young man, Tom Flores. He's you know, a, he is a, a good, composed guy. Yeah. He keeps control of himself. He has, uh, as far as the records go, he threw for 407 yards one time as a quarterback for these Oakland Raiders, and Kenny Staber has yet to match that particular yardage production. Second on the all-time list, so he's a good quarterback for him. Stepped in and it really got up an unusual situation. Out there, they're building, transition period. A tough one, but I think he's held his composure very well. Jim Breach for the conversion. And Oakland draws closer. Within two touchdowns, the 301 remaining in the third quarter. 35-21, the Saints. With three minutes remaining in the third quarter, Oakland to kick off. New Orleans, perhaps a little prematurely, anticipating an onside kick. Two men deep, nine men up close. Breach hits it. Rich Monty from the five-yard line. And Monty out to the 27-yard line. Derek Jensen down there defensively for Oakland. Marking at the 28th will be first and 10 for the New Orleans Saints, who had better not get too comfortable with their two-touchdown lead. You're right. This is like a prize fight. They have to reestablish now their offense. I think that your analogy of the prize fight is quite good. I'm, I'm somewhat partial to quarterbacks, but I think Staper had a good chance if he wanted to, to stay on the on the canvas. After his interception, when he was hurt slightly, we saw Plunkett warm up. Plunkett even thought he was going to play. If somebody could start, they look out there, Staper's back in there and takes him down and scores. Chandler's foot to the left. The motion man, Ike Harris. Archie Manning, I believe, might have missed a hand. I think he there. did, Frank. <laughs> Broken and play. Nevertheless, he takes it out to the 30-yard line for a gain of about seven. It'll be second and three. Broken play, and he made it work. And just trying to get a quick hand out in there. And let's see what happened. I believe he was going to miss that handoff. Going to be a fumble, and luckily he didn't. You see Galbraith come back to pick up the fumble. Archie says, wait a minute, I'm going to slide in here safe. He'll pick me up about five or six, maybe seven, and try it again. Did a very heady thing. You know, turned, he knew where the block was, turned right behind it, got good yardage. Yeah, you got to get the heads together. 
<laughs> either heady or out of stark terror. <laughs> Muncie. Whoa. Oh, Good whoa. block oh, by oh, the oh, Z-man, oh. Emmanuel Sanders, and Muncie gets a first oh, down oh. out over the 40-yard line. The first we've heard of him for a while. Daniel Sanders with a big block for Muncie. There's a good switch goal, a good old boy from Kentucky. Mr. Fettersfield. The X. We're talking about, you got JT Taylor 71 over there. You got some good blocks out in front. That's Henry Childs doing some blocking. And then look at Muncie. He just says, I'm going to come throw three, 235 pounds at you. They just can't stop him. From the Saints 41 yard line and behind Ike Harris incomplete. Yeah, and Archie knows it. He had him open across the middle in there and he says, that one was just behind you, Ike. You know, sometimes there's a <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> um, Bob Buecher is upset. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to meet Bob Buecher one of these days. I don't even know that guy. No, a psychiatrist have a field day as to why all these chickens are breaking out all over. <laughs> Well, it's which came I mean, first, the chicken I'm not or the asking egg. for letters or explanation. Right? No. Just an observation. Yeah, that's true. Everywhere you go. Second and ten. Manning. One of Charles. He was covered, and Manning's going down. John Matuzak defensively in there for the Raiders. They had Charles coming across, covered Frank, and they also had Ike Harris covered going deep. So it was good defensive coverage in that secondary. Really basically man for man coverage back there, too. First sack of the night for Archie Manning. Only his 13th of the season. Things getting interesting. We're still in the third quarter. Very big play for New Orleans. Oakland are just now anticipating the pass from Archie Manning. Third down, 17, the ball marked inside their own 34-yard line. I Harris, split to the right, top of your screen is Russ Chandler. Uh -oh. Tuck Muncy, and he is pulled down defensively. Rod Martin there for Oakland, and New Orleans will have to turn it over. Rod, good play by Martin. We saw him on a kind of delayed blitz earlier in the ball game come in and, and, and force a bad throw. Do you understand the call? Pardon me? You understand the call? Well, I think what's, yeah, I, I think what they're saying is some, we've got to stop them sometime, and they don't want it to go beyond turnover, so they're going to rely on this punter again to kick that thing off. They're not really waiting to change the... Partridge. The <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> high punt. Matthews should have made the fair catch, but uh, he had a little help from his pal there, Mike Davis, to save it. He better be glad Davis is there, because that'd have been another big one, Frank. Rich Monty is down there hustling for the special unit team for the New Orleans Saints to get to Ira Matthews. Here it is again. Little chancy. Monty is the guy that's the leader of this group. He's been the headhunter, or whatever you want to call it, uh, on their special teams for a couple of years. He set a record a year ago for tackles on special teams for 27 unassisted tackles. And he also does, too, Don. Every time he makes a tackle, he donates $10 to the American Cancer Society. He's had a personal tragedy in his own life. Every time he runs a punt back or kickoff back, he gives a dollar for every yard he gains. And he asked the folks in this area to match him, and they've raised a lot of money. You're right, Frank. He does a heck of a job. That nice was Van man. Egan. As we get close to the end of the third quarter, Van Egan gets six. It'll be second down and four when we come back. It's the end of the third quarter. We'll return for the fourth quarter in a moment. We begin the fourth quarter. I say fourth quarter, other than the final quarter, because it has a lot of potential. <laughs> Heaviest burden in life. Ball at the 35-yard line, the Oakland Raiders. With the second down and three. Whittington, Van Egan, the setbacks. And the two tight ends are Derek Ramsey, 84, Casper, 87. Look at that. Whittington, go. huge hole. And Whittington, out to the 48-yard line, and Oakland first down. Things grow curious and curious. Remember our next two games. Next Monday night, Pittsburgh at Houston. And then the Monday night after that, for all the marbles in the Western Division AFC, Denver against San Diego. And I will be there for that one to wrap it up. That's going to be a good one. I'm going to miss that Pittsburgh-Houston game. I'm sorry about that. Pittsburgh 11-3, and three, Houston 10-4, and four, as they battle for first place in that wild central division of the AFC. 
On first and ten. Play action by Stabler. Look at that mobility now. Who said he couldn't run? That was an early hit by number 27, Ray Brown, on Dave Casper. That's and exactly, the flags are down. That's exactly right. And in the meantime, Kenny has not gotten off the big bomb tonight. Let's look at this again. Well, he had to move out of the pocket a little bit. You see again a pattern adjustment by Casper. And Ray Brown comes in, hits him a little early. Ray Brown, the Saints got from Atlanta. He was drafted in the sixth round like in 71. He's played in uh, 123 straight games. Ray Brown, another Tony, durable character. Tony Galbraith, what, what a penalty. night he's in. Automatic first, the ball at the 45-yard line. Looker. For Russell, and Russell is down close to the 35 for another first down. Might be inches short. Just two points. Kenny, who could go for the bomb at any time, has not connected for it tonight. And Wes Chandler, incredibly, has not caught a single pass. Caught one, but was ruled out of bounds. I was going to bring that up as being very curiouser and curiouser, too, because yeah. he is not really one of those figured in the game, and New Orleans yet has moved the ball very well. Well, neither team has been able to stop, neither defensive team has been able to stop the offense. That's how we've got 56 points on the board. Chester and Ramsey are the two tight ends. Whittington gets the call. Nifty little bit of maneuvering there to get down to the 31-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down. Or rather, that's but Oakland, gives him the first down at the 31. But Frank, Oakland, despite three critical mistakes, turnovers that produce three quick New Orleans touchdowns, the mistakes haven't given New Orleans perfect field position in touchdown territory, Oakland has not panicked. And you've got to credit Tom Flores for that and Kenny Stabler. Absolutely. Stabler, branch. First down inside the 20. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? That's just like automatic. Quick, quick. There he goes. Stepped out of bounds. Got him a big first down. I don't think I have ever seen, as we look at branch isolated, Don. Well, he's got it. Eric Felton is a second year guy. He's certainly seen and heard a lot about Cliff Branch. He's not going to give him a lot of time. He's giving him too much space to run over there. And I would imagine Kenny's fouled that back in there and he'll come back and use it again. They're playing off of him in this corner. It's pretty, pretty far. Branch out to the right. The first down is at the 17-yard line. Ramsey's intended. He's all open. alone. How do you like all this? All alone. We got ourselves a good one. Oh, nice. what a ball game this is turning out to be. Derek Ramsey, touchdown, Stabler. We emphasize again, Stabler shaken up, apparently out of the game. Plunkett going in form, and Stabler insisting on going back. Well, we saw this Oakland Raider team set a scoring record for Monday Night Football when they hit 45 against San Diego on a Thursday night. And this one is not over yet, as they say. Somebody said that before, haven't they? Wide open, though. Again, they're really picking that secondary part. Uh, the defensive teams, there's a reason, I guess, why they're so far down in their standings. Maybe those statistics do mean something. The tight ends for Oakland have caught well over 100 passes. Ramsey, Casper, and Chester. This is Breach. And Oakland draws within a touchdown and a conversion of time this game up. And watch Derek Ramsey doing a little Barishnikov in the end zone to keep the feet in. Well, this Derek Ramsey's a guy that we don't hear a lot of. It's primarily because of the guys that they have out there in front of him. But he did a good job. He had that thing in there. And he's uh, certainly had that drill before. How you keep it in there. 12.51 remaining in this game. Don't go away. Now 51 remaining in the fourth quarter. Breach will kick deep. Rich Marty along with Wes Chandler. Build along the ground. This is Chandler. Or rather Rich Marty who picked it up and a flag is down. First time in his career he came within 56 yards of it a year ago. And what many considered a bad season for Stabler. And he got over the 3,000 yard mark for the first time. Well, as we wait the call on this penalty, uh, that's just the kind you need to set up. 
you mentioned during the break that to you New Orleans is beginning to play a little bit tentatively and you said being a young team they have to learn how to win. I think that's a very valid comment. Well I think they do. I was talking to Dick Nolan yesterday. You realize that Dick Nolan in a year and a half, a little over a year and a half has won more ball games than any coach down here at personal foul clipping a number 27 on the kick return team. First down. Rebound clipping. The, the point is that how they, they've never learned to win. They've always had losing seasons. They've never had a winning season. If they go into the playoffs, they would, and assuming that Tampa does too, that'd be the first team that ever goes from a losing season into the playoff the next year. So they've got to learn those things. And it sounds silly, but it's true. First and ten. Archie Manning, his own 14 yard line. Tony Galbraith. And Galbraith. Out over the 15 to the 17, gain of five. It'll be second and five. What New Orleans needs now, they got a move big play. The ball. They That's need right. a big play to restore the confidence that they had when they took the field tonight. I said Kenny hadn't thrown the bomb. You can't call a 17-yard touchdown pass a bomb. But while Oakland normally operates in passing in the 14 to 17-yard range, they've not been doing that tonight. Kenny went to it on the 17-yard at a Rams. Second down, Chandler is put to the left. And he will put it in the air. Pass a bomb. But while Oakland normally operates in passing in the 14 to 17 yard range, they've not been doing that tonight. Kenny went to it on the 17 yard at a rims. Second down, Chandler is put to the left. And he will put it in the air. Fires incomplete. Pat Tume and well, Reggie Kinlaw pursuing Manning. Must remember, if Archie can't pull out a first down on this third down play, you can expect good field position for Oakland and the way Stabler is operating. I was about to say earlier, Gift, I don't think for a given series of plays I ever saw a greater quarterbacking than after Benny Malone had scored a touchdown for Miami to put the Dolphins ahead in a playoff game. Stabler engineered that drive that led to the waffle pass caught by Clarence Davis that brought Oakland the victory. That was a good one. Four man front, third and long for New Orleans. Five defensive backs in. Monty Johnson, lone linebacker for Oakland. Oh Tune right in the face. And he got uh, Archie there. Manning, and a flag goes down. And yeah, that's what they needed, Frank, is some kind of something to get it going. It's, you don't say need it. What? Holding, and it's going to go against New Orleans. I think Archie Manning thought, as you did, Don, he was going to get a roughing the passer call. I did, too. I really thought that's what it was. Because Actually, it just a up. super play by Tume. Yes, it was. And suddenly, 21 points ahead, New Orleans in deep trouble. Well, you can kind of sense, if you listen to this crowd, that something's happening. Here's Tume, number 67, coming in. He throws the ball. It's not a roughing penalty. He really has motion and started toward the quarterback. Before and uh, he, before, as he was releasing that ball, you can see why quarterbacks have recurring nightmares. Yeah, Rick Partridge to punt on fourth down. Ira Matthews for Oakland, standing at his 45-yard line. Not a good kick, and it goes out of bounds about the 43-yard line. So Oakland down by a touchdown. Will have good field position and Stabler is hot. Kenny Stabler. With the top. His head coach Tom Flores, a former Oakland Raider quarterback, moves out to the huddle and you sense that the momentum has dramatically changed. Neighbor on the night, 23 of 37, 221 yards. But there's been an ebb and flow in this game of momentum. And it's with Oakland at the moment. Van Egan surging over the 45 for a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Obviously, you've heard so many millions of times how important first down is. Obviously, Oakland wanted more than that. But yet, you can see the composure of this, the most consistently winning team in pro football over the last 10 years. Second down, eight. Stabler, running his box left. Trying to get single coverage, jumps it off to Whittington. Whittington out of bounds. 
Good job by Eric Feldman that time. He had him covered. He saw him try to strip the ball away, which he did. Then he says, well, maybe they think he caught it, and there's a fumble. I'll just pick it up. Boy. That's true. So it'll be third down and eight. Winnington has a tendency to catch the football and then when hit, give it up. I think that may be said off tonight's evidence. They're pretty sophisticated football fans here in New Orleans. They see their special pass defensive unit come on the field. They start to cheer. They know this is a big play for New Orleans. They're on their feet. That's a big sack by Ron oh, Reese. Ron Reese. They couldn't get him out of there. If we get a look at that again, you'll see that the blocker could not get him out of there. Well, you're coming over on, on the top of your screen. You see they're working on it. That's Art Shell, and he just got, they got a little more speed than Art. Came right around. And that is something. That put him back in there. Third you, down and big. You push Art Shell out of the way that way, you are doing some kind of job to use that old cliche. Uh, neutralize the strength and the speed got around him. Great guy. This is Rich Money for New Orleans. That is 11 yard line. Right now, let's slip down. Good kick. Gets though. it to the 20-yard line. Down there to cover Rufus Bess. A great guy. Appears to injure something. Jumping off. We'll be back. We'll know what happened, but it was not his usual stride and the fluid that he motions that he usually kicks with. So first down on the 20, Frank. New Orleans, and they need desperately to get something happening offensively. Their defense has risen to the occasion. This is Chuck Muncy, and he can make it happen rather fast. He really can. Didn't look like he was going to get anything there. He got almost six. And the Saints must reestablish offensive drive here for their sake. This is only their fourth possession, Frank, in the second half. Muncy gets it out to the 25. The word on Guy is slight twist of the ankle. As you can see, he did not have a trainer working with him. We expect him to be back if he's needed. Second and five. I Harris in motion. The reverse. Oh! oh and well, Reggie Kenlaw just fell right into it more than anything else. He really did, Frank. They didn't have, they had the wrong uh, play for that defense. There was, uh, well, you don't want I Harris hurt. Reggie Kenlaw collided with him head on. He was going for the passer, Archie Manning, and he just ran into I Harris. Let's look. Well, uh, he sees it. Yeah, I would say that Dobler probably missed an assignment there too. You saw Dobler blocking down on the middle guy. Oh, Ooh, his knee. Oh, I hate that. Mike mm. mm. Harris, who came for the Cardinals a year ago, and that was a he really was twisted under Kenlaw there. I remind you, ABC Sports this Saturday. NCAA College Football Live, 1.30 Eastern Time, Division II Championship, Youngstown State versus Delaware, Division I AA Semifinals, Lehigh versus Murray State, the University of Nevada, at Reno versus Eastern Kentucky. Also, ABC's Wide World of Sports, 5 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, 4 o'clock Central, World Cup Boxing, World Gymnastics Championships, all over most of these ABC stations. As we look at the mascot for the Saints, who's obviously enjoying something, I must tell you, Frank, the viewers will see a kid named Jackie Beer. They'll see a kid named Tucker, another named Steeples. Kids who are unknown now, the way Sugar Ray Leonard, now a world champion, was unknown in 1976, and Howard Davis, and the rest of that great boxing team. America has built with brilliant coaching, as I said, by Pat Nappy, again the coach in the forthcoming Moscow Olympics, a similar kind of team. They could win many gold medals. You'll enjoy the show. I care. You take it from the field. Third down and 11. They mark the ball where Ken Law and Harris collided on progress. Manning, Galbraith, oh, first down. Wow. Out to the 33 yard line. Charles yep. Phillips defensively, but Manning right on target to the sure handed Galbraith. 
Got to give him a lot of credit there, because that, to me, was a crucial one. You can oh, also really? sense it in this stadium. The crowd was just silent. Third down and 11, maybe 12. Archie comes back. It's fairly good protection. Big Phil, y'all's coming right there at him. Matuzak, I guess it was. Calmly hit Galbraith. This guy is a heck of a all-around purpose back. He's a remarkable receiver for a back coming out of the backfield. Just remarkable. Except for that one brilliant touchdown catch by Henry Childs. The key receptions tonight have been made by Galbraith. Marty in the ball game, a wide receiver. The handoff goes to Muncie. Good and turn the corner. Let's see, out of the line of scrimmage. Nobody's perfect. That's right. They had a good game. They could have. They stacked up again. Rod Martin's playing a good game. He's an exceptionally good athlete. Those linebacker course for the Oakland Raiders are all really good. We, through the years, have mentioned all of them any number of times. But Rod Martin, Villapiano, Johnson, got a good group. Of Hendricks. Them. Yep, and don't forget the old crane. Second and ten. Oops, Muncie. Ball slightly behind him. He could not hold on. Rod Martin there covering. And while Ike Harris is on the bench, he limped off the field with assistance. We have Rich Marty in a wide receiver who only has two receptions on the year. This Ike Harris had three super years with the Cardinals before coming to the Saints last year along with Conrad Dobler. So Archie faces another critical third down. But should they fail to make the first down, this time when they punt, Oakland won't have that sweet field position they had early. Russ Tanner still without a reception for New Orleans. Tender for do now. Muncie. All right, what an interception. Off. Picked off by Rufus Bess, a rookie free agent from uh, South, South Carolina, Carolina State. State. How they can produce them at that school. Well, wait a minute. Now somebody missed something over here on the right side. You see, there's. A lot of pressure come in over there. On the left side, the ball was thrown late, trying to force the ball. Good coverage by Best. Muncie's out there on the pattern. Well, there you go. What kind of field position they have now? So Perfect. nice. 44 yard line. Stabler with the hot hand. That broke Archie's interception string, or lack of interceptions. Whittington piled up defensively again is Don Reese. He's playing a well of a game tonight. A gain of a yard, it'll be second and nine. Remember on their last series, when again they had good field position, though not quite as good as now, Stabler called basically the same play. And he got himself in a hole. Now, quickly, with only a yard, he's in a hole. 725 yep. remaining. Second down nine for Stabler. Inside handoff, Whittington gets a block from Booker Russell and moves down to the 38-yard line, where it'll be third down and four, upended there by Alex Price. What would you do here, Dandy? Well, I think really right now, in this situation, he's in a zone where he can run twice if he sure, wants to. Sure, so, down territory. Yeah, he's got a lot of uh, opportunities to do things out there, considering that the Saints really are the weakest team against the run. I don't think he'd be bad by running Van Egan a couple of times. The Esau battle. The Saints up by seven points. At one point, they were up by 21 before the end of the first half, and Russell gets the first down. Down uh, to about the 32-yard line. Yeah, and if Van Egan's not in there, give it to Russell. Yeah, Booker, either one of them. They'll take it. Big back right there, Booker Russell. Yeah. Archie Manning knew that he was late with that last pass that was picked off by Rufus Bess. That's an interesting graphic. Well, a lot of it goes back to they've only trapped him 12 times coming to this ball game tonight. A lot of things really figure into that interception deal. Stabler floods his backs to the right, and then Grove goes out to Whittington, and it's deflected. What a nifty play by Mr. Groom. It was because Pat Hughes was a little bit off, a little bit further off from Whittington than he wanted to be. He had about 10 yards in between him. So it was a good shot. And if he'd gotten this one out there, we haven't heard of uh, Lois coming in there tonight for the quarterback traps. As we mentioned earlier he leaves the league and leaves the team in those. 6 2 to play. Ball at the 31-yard line, second and 10. Branch, who did not start tonight, has been one of Stabler's key receivers. He's caught five for 53. Casper has caught six. Yeah. 
Stabler. Oh, he threw a pass bad pass. He threw a bad pass. Castro was open. He really did, Frank. That ball just nosedived on it. Bounced out in front. He also had Booker Russell open down the middle on a delay route coming out. He had plenty of time to throw. That one was just not thrown well. Third it's, down, ten. It's not the critic. It's the man in the arena. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I've thrown them just like that. I know. <laughs> That's what I meant. That's it. <laughs> Intercept. Branch. Uh -huh. And almost picked off in the end zone by Chapman. Give Branch credit <laughs> for preventing that one because Chapman had it. Uh, not a, again, not a very well thrown ball. Thrown very early, very deep. And uh, really pretty good coverage. You see, Chapman has got him all the way there. Branch recognizes that, comes in and changes from an offensive receiver to a defensive back and strips him of the ball. And on fourth down, Jim Breach comes out. 13 of 20 on the season. His long field goal, 40 yards. Well, the holder is Dave Hom. He's that, a quarterback. That's what you've got to watch. The attempt is 49. Nope. Wide to the right. And for New Orleans, possession at the 31-yard line. The line of scrimmage. 546 left. If New Orleans can mount any kind of drive, I could do it. Well, it's true. But you know, we've been, I think, justly giving Kenny a lot of praise tonight, but really on the last two passes were not good passes. He had an open receiver, in my opinion, with, with Casper, and he threw to one that was covered when he tried to hit Branch. So those were two critical plays. Cook's money remains a wide receiver. Sprained knee was the word on Ike Harris. Muncie, oh, he's pounded by Kenlaw. Reggie Kenlaw, a rookie from Oklahoma, 12th round draft pick, has turned into a surprisingly fine, good football player for Oakland. Comes in when they want to get into their 4 3 defense, get more of a pass pressure. Archie uh, has some decision making to do. That's true. It got basically a fairly look at that graphic right there the first half and the second half you can see whose ball game it was when and where second down nine Galbraith and Tony gets out over the 35 to the 36 again three three and a half yards it'll be third down five 455 left counting down one of those offenses you play, the uh, offensive plays you call and kind of hope that it goes well because it was very safe. They're trying to be conservative but not run the middle of the line. So it's just a little quick flare pass out to Galbraith. Say, gosh, I hope somebody misses a tackle and he can pick us up the first down. Not really a play with a great deal of authority. That was Dave Browning who left off for Oakland. John Matuzak, 72, replaces him. There he is, top of your screen, Big John. Third and five. Manning, a lot of time, and Galbraith is open, but he does not hold on with one hand. Rod Martin defensively, but Galbraith was open. He really was, Frank. It was one of those, it would have been a good pass. Galbraith seems to think he should have caught it. I think, again, it could have been thrown a little bit better. He had fairly good coverage once again, but I believe that was Rod Martin that was over there. So very quickly, with 421 left, Oakland will get possession. Let's see when. Lots of time, really not even a factor at this point. I think it's interesting that New Orleans has not been able to get a first down on these last couple of drives. Rick Partridge. Ira Matthews can't get to it, and it goes out of bounds at the 33-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 Oakland. Don't forget, next Monday night, we'll be in the Astrodome in Houston with Pittsburgh and Houston. And then, of course, our final Monday night telecast will determine the Western Division Conference of the AFC. Denver and San Diego in San Diego. That's when Dandy visits that superb zoo. I go every year. I love the San it's Diego. The greatest zoo, zoo yeah. I think it in is, the world. It really is fun. First and ten, Oakland.
They'll play at her. Screen, first down. It. Tries to get the screen back. It was Bobble, I believe, by Van Egan uh -huh. and taken by Dalby. I love it. <laughs> Dalby says there's a football in it. I'm going to catch it. <laughs> and the statistical charge of Dalby will go call. down with yeah, one reception. What, what, a, what is that now? Is that going as a reception? A curious thing. Sure, it's a reception. All you right. can take it from a deflection. He couldn't, of course, not handle it with that 50 number. He gets a yard out of it. It'll be second down and nine. Everyone becomes eligible once an eligible receiver touches it. I'm glad you told me that. Because I was. Looks like Michelle's lined up in the backfield. It's a new rule. Complete. The France oh. and what a move. Goodbye. Oh, catch him. Goodbye. There are no flags down. Is that wild? That happened fast. 3-19 still left in the game. Cliff Brads, who was a 9-3 sprinter in his days at the University of Colorado, when he gets the running room, you can write it off. He can really motor. Well, it was uh, not anything fancy, just one of little outside. Look at that move he put on there at Felton. Boy, and what a beautiful block right there. Let's see if we can get that guy's number. The oh. man who threw the block. Eric Feldman is, going, is the second-year guy trying to recover, but this is the move right there. No, no way close. It was Whittington that has made that block. That's right. Other Arthur Whittington. Whittington. Now let's see. Breach in the kind of position he was in against Kansas City when he missed this very kick on the field goal that would have tied the game. Actually, he was closer than this by about a yard. Maybe that threw him off. Right through the middle. We're tied at 35 with 319 <laughs> remaining in the game. At one point, New Orleans with a 21 point lead, then Stabler got hot. Show you the instincts of a good runner. Now we're going to pick him up later downfield. He used all the field he could use, too. He's sure getting close to that white line right there, isn't he? And how about that one right there? Good thing he stayed on his toes. Yeah. He got back in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about the move he put on Felton, which was absolutely brilliant. He knew where Felton was. He didn't even give him an odd inside, and he just totally lost Felton. Breach hits it. This is Wayne Wilson. The rookie from Shepard gets it out to the 31-yard line. And we're all tied up, 35-35. I want to remind you again, tonight and every night, as long as the situation in Iran remains, ABC News will present a special report every night after your late local news. And ABC News will keep you up to date on the Iranian situation and all the news weeknights on World News Tonight. So stay with our ABC News team. They're doing a whale of a job. Now let's see if Archie, Tony, and Chuck can get it back. And they haven't used Wes Chandler all night. He has not caught a pass. He has the number one guy. He has 59 coming into tonight's game. Chandler has not caught a ball tonight. Marty in motion. Handoff, Galver, huge hole. And Galver, bang, out to the 40-yard line. Quick pickup with eight, eight and a half yards. Second down and one. Falls quickly, five seconds, and allow our station all along the line to identify themselves. This is Channel 7, KBC-TV, Los Angeles. And if you were to go back, you might look at the long drive by Kenny Stabler who had help on a pass interference call in the end zone by Eric Felton. Moved the ball with 2.18 left. The length of the field to get Oakland within 14 points. Uh, Somebody called the fumble, and this is Mike Davis. I heard. Oh, no. How about now that? Now this is Ted Hendricks. I don't believe this. Somebody was calling fumble. You saw the ball come out of the hands of Muncie. Coming up with it was Mike Davis. He got the ball downfield to Hendricks, and Oakland is threatening. The Frank, fan, Frank, the fans here are absolutely stunned. Well, I don't blame them. My gosh, I heard that fumble, 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 and he fumbled is trying to change hands. And he did it by his, completely on his own. Nobody even hit him. He Talks about the instincts. Ball. How about this one as he's going? Oh, that's got to be bring. They got to bring that back, haven't they? Yeah. It should have been brought back, but it's being marked at the 13. Oh, well. <laughs> Hendricks made sure, though. Look at Ted. What an incredible football game this has turned out to be. Two minutes, 21 seconds left. Tied at 35, and Oakland threatening. Whittington. 
Fettersfield made the stop, but not until Whittington had moved to the nine. A gain of three, it'll be second and seven. First down could be accomplished at the three-yard line. It's Ted Hendricks, all of his career. Baltimore, then Green Bay, now Oakland. He's always been where the football was. Interceptions, fumble recoveries. A moment ago, he was there, Johnny on the spot. He's pretty the lateral for Mike Davis. He has 19 block kicks in his career, which is an NFL record with points after touchdown, field goals, and punts. Pretty tough sit moment for Dick Nolan. You saw his face trying to hold himself together. Well, we're in a very similar situation to the Rams and the Vikings uh, yesterday, except it looks that the Raiders are in a much better position. If they're not, this you've got a scoop. That's right, before you get into your overtime. 70 points scored in this game thus far. The most number of points ever scored on Monday Night Football, 1977. Dallas, 42, the 49ers, 35. That's terrific. Now tell me, who were the other two guys that were the most valuable players in the Sugar Bowl besides Manning? I told you, Archie Manning. Yeah, that was one. Uh, and they both, they all play for the Saints. I'll give you one. Tennessee. Oklahoma. Tinker Owens and Bobby Scott. Tinker Owens. There that's you go. Right. Tinker Owens and Bobby. Yeah, there you go. All right, here we go. Looking ahead, each team has two timeouts. Second down and seven. The ball at the nine-yard line. The setbacks are Derek Jensen, 31, Mark Van Egan, 30. Van Egan, line of scrimmage, surges forward close to the eight-yard line, hit there by Ray Brown, who plays safety like a linebacker. Do you think heading to the two-minute warning? And there it is. Two minutes remaining to be played. Tied at 35. Both teams, two timeouts. We'll be back in a moment. 35-35, third down and five for the Oakland Raiders at the eight-yard line of the New Orleans Saints. Stabler has been over on the sidelines during the two-minute warning break. Props back out onto the field. Happen to be curious about how many points scored by two teams in one game, what the NFL record is, 113. Good shot. It's Washington against the New York Giants. Way really back to a win. I like it. You think anybody's pulling harder for them to make a first down than Jim Breach? I would suspect. <laughs> Stabler. Cliff Branch touchdown. Cliff Branch oh, was spectacular. Was he was, well, I won't say bench, but he did not start tonight, but he has been the determining factor for Oakland here in the second half. He certainly has, and Stabler with him, and what a remarkable comeback. This team that held its poise. I go back to what Dandy said earlier. This team knows how to win. The young New Orleans team must learn how to win. I do think it's one of those intangibles that sounds really hokey, but you do have to learn how to do it. A good move by Branch, but the ball was drilled right in there between the two and the one. Very crucial third situation, third and five. And now they've given New Orleans something to really shoot for. Breach. Relief etched on his face. That's good. And the Raiders have taken the lead for the first time tonight, 42-35. Coming from the outside, that's working on Clarence Chapman. Into the inside, they just couldn't keep him out of it. The ball was well thrown, a good route, one to the inside. Far from over, 154 remaining. Archie Manning will have a couple of timeouts to work with. Lester Hayes hugging Cliff Branch, Stabler. You know, you get the feeling that Stabler, when they brought Branch into this game tonight, said, well, I'm going to get Branch off the hook. He's been a great receiver for me for many years, and sure enough, he's been going to Branch all night long. He's been going to him deep in the end zone. He went to him in the end zone three different times, and Branch has really come through for him. I think, Frank, you know, when you see that two tight end situation, that's part of it. Branch is, I uh, see there by your card, has caught seven for 126 tonight. That's a heck of a... A did, game for any receiver. Did you see any question about whether Branch got into the end zone or not? No. I didn't need I thought he was in. Yeah, he got there. Now, in the previous one, there might be a question as to whether he went out of bounds, but it's over. Forget it. Breach. Kicks off. Taken there by Wayne Wilson. And Wayne Wilson. Gave the crowd a bit of a thrill as it looked like he was going to break it off, but he's dropped it to 30. There's Cliff. <laughs> okay. Give the credit to Arthur on the block. That's what he's doing. That's right. 
And that's nice because Arthur didn't throw a good block for him to spring him over there. Meantime, it's not over yet. Branch has scored his 48th and 49th career touchdowns tonight. That's rather remarkable because he's really playing in his eighth year. Archie's got 147 left. And two timeouts from his own 30-yard line. Galbraith is being dueled there with number 53, Rod Martin, incomplete. Archie, except for that one remarkable throw, an equally remarkable catch by Henry Childs, hasn't succeeded with the bomb either tonight. Nobody threw some good balls in the first half. The second half has just been really a mistake-ridden sort of half as you see him mark off 10 more yards against New Orleans. And you don't make mistakes like that. You wonder why, you know, you say that Especially when you look back, they scored first. Holding, number 65, first down. Robert Woods holding. It'll be first down and 20. That's the story on the clock. Remember, Frank, they scored first in this half, built their lead up to 21 points, and then Oakland shut them off. Twice they've led by 21. But Stabler, four touchdowns on the night, three in this fourth quarter. I, uh, Manning, Galbraith, incomplete. I don't really understand those routes. He's sending five, by, five guys out. Charles goes deep. He's got... Once he got trying to go deep, he must be just trying to work some patterns under. That was a first down in 20, so maybe he's trying to pick up half of it. But you've got a game breaker on your side. I think that's important. Wes Chandler, we've talked about him a couple of times tonight. Incredible the way he's been shut off. In the meantime, these fans dreaming of a playoff spot. So elated when they were 21 points ahead. The game seemingly in the bag. In a state of absolute shock, and you've got a feel for it. Didn't work. Inside did toss to Muncie. That did not fool a whole oh, lot of folks. Oh. Good. Hit there by Monty Johnson. After a gain of about three, it'll be third down and 18. Assuming that they do lose this game tonight, it puts a great deal of pressure on their game next week against an extremely good team that was upset last uh, yesterday. They'll That's be out for blood because they've got to hang in there with Denver, San Diego. Absolutely. And then there's Los Angeles to be met. They could get by by losing one of these two and then face New, uh, Los Angeles in the final game. New Orleans, excuse me, New Orleans has called timeout. The San, Diego, one timeout. the San Diego game next week from San Diego's viewpoint, as I have indicated earlier, will not change the net effect of the Denver game for San Diego. No, but that's for true. San Diego, it's a matter of a great deal of pride and self-respect. That team had come so strongly and ripped the Steelers. 35 to 7 and to be upset by Atlanta which has had a difficult year and especially by an NFC team they'll be loaded for bad. Now these guys right now are what you call in trouble third down and almost I'd say 17 or 18 yards to go. So you know they're going to try two tries at it and they may go into the middle again try to pick up half of it this time and try to hit two in a row. If they don't it's going to be too bad. Archie wanted a little guidance, moved over to the sidelines, talked with Nick Nolan, I'm sure offensive coordinator Ed Hughes, third down 18, this is what they decided. Went too high. Incomplete, intended for Monty. And now it brings up fourth down with 118 on the clock. Oakland with 31 first downs tonight. New Orleans 18, an NFL record there. 38 by Los Angeles against the Giants in 1966. Got a field for Dick Nolan too. Who overall has done a really fine coaching job this year. His record of though to seven and seven. But in this top seed nice. Derby League this year, he's not out of it yet. No what? He's getting closer. And old Flores is using that mathematical equation to say I'm still eligible too, so don't count me out either. They're thinking about two losses, one to Kansas City, one to the Jets. One timeout for New Orleans, they have a fourth down and 18. I'd say rather desperate. Stack over to the left, they'll hang it up very high, hope for the best. And the flag goes down. Incomplete, but again, as Don said, a flag down, line of scrimmage. That's what they call, what do they call it, Big Ben down here? Offside, Offside open. open, so we'll have another shot. One well, ten. One timeout. 
as Roger Staubach would say, it's a Hail Mary situation. <laughs> Well, with this five yards will help them a little bit because now they can move into more conventional sort of route. They're now trying to pick up 13 yards instead of the 18. That five does make a difference. Outside so, on the defense, number 90. You could look to a guy maybe like Charles coming across the middle. It appears that Oakland's going to give them certain things. They're going to try to protect against a big bomb here with a minute and 10 seconds to go. Willie Jones was the eager Oakland Raider offsides. Fourth down, 13, 110 remaining. New Orleans with one timeout. They stack up Rich Monty, Chuck Muncie, and Wes Chandler to the left. And coming in was number 90, Willie Jones. The party. Manning goes down. It's Oakland's football. They say that all good things must end. Eat your heart out, you Permian. They call it <laughs> comes tonight. Willie Jones, the rookie from Florida State, getting away from the block. J.T. Taylor, and down goes Manning. Too much time, though, Frank. He just, you know, that's asking him to hold him out about five seconds. It's a little bit too much time. Oakland, in my opinion, just came back this second half. It would not be tonight. I really think the key was when you saw Kenny Stabler get up off the mat, and come back, and say, "Hey, look, this thing is not over. It's got to have an effect on the rest of the guys in that huddle." He put them together. They brought it back. Especially when he was shaken up. That's apparently out of the game. New Orleans can stop at one time. Booker Russell gets the call. His job, just hang on to it because they'll be trying to strip it. Russell down to the 17 yard line. New Orleans will use their final timeout. And we can tell you our executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football produced by Dennis Lewin <laughs> and directed by Chet Forty. Our technical director, Bill Morris. Social director Rob Finer, who is celebrating his 29th birthday today. Hot birthday. Dog is Tough thing. Technical manager, Coach Goldsrain, our unit manager, Bob Crivelli. So tough. And research man, Jerry Klein, who's been thumbing the books over here tonight. Our spotter, Steve Mazika. So tough for Dick Nolan. He won't sleep tonight. Well, it was, a, I think, a tremendous disappointment and letdown for the whole team. As you saw Archie in the beginning of the telecast talk about how much this game meant to them here. Uh, they were really all keyed up for it, and really they just didn't quite measure up to the task, and that's basically it. They had the opportunities several times to protect the big lead. They didn't know how to do it, and they didn't do it. So they go back to the drawing board. They're 7-7 right now, and the Rams are one game up. I remind you again, immediately following the local news, as we will continue to do here at ABC, ABC News will bring you an update on the Iranian crisis. Stay with us. Guys are doing a tremendous job. Stabler to the knees. We can riffle off 30 seconds here. Yep. Well, Garrow can't say you sang it too early tonight. No, and I thought I sang it well, too. I don't know what Garrow saw. I've only missed one time, and that was down in Miami. Archie. Archie Manning looking out of the field. Meanwhile, his counterpart, Stabler, was 26 of 44 for the night, 296 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions, came off the mat here in the second half to go 10 of 20 for 149 yards and three touchdowns. Tell me, Ken Stabler's washed up. He's as good as they come when he's on. That's it, Dandy. Yep. See you in San Diego. You got it, pal. Pittsburgh and Houston coming up next Monday night, followed by San Diego and Denver on the final Monday night of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. And the final score, Oakland 42, New Orleans 35. Be sure to join us next week for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Houston Oilers from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline. This has been a presentation of the leader, ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics.